Something good, C star two. Our only on an the inch rock long. in front of it. Oh yeah. Oh, Sengid. may have been full grown. Okay, Steve, go ahead. Pretty far. And a riddle star next to it. And oh a shrimp. Yeah. And a shrimp. Hanging out. A lot of shrimp on this dive. I know. Thank you. You can come wide. Although the very first one with the whole dance was probably the best. Love it. Oh, is that a cryo? I don't know what that was on that rock over there. What's the strangest thing we've come across? I guess it depends on who you ask. I was pretty mesmerized by the sea dandelion. I didn't know what that was yeah. for like a couple minutes. And I was like, what is this? I think there's a creature. new <laughs> video of that. There is. Yep, yep, yep. I think I maybe said it yesterday. So anybody who is interested, there is a highlight video of the sea dandelion um, on the homepage of nautiluslive.org if you're wondering what that is. But it was definitely one of the strangest things that I learned about. It was very, very cool uh, to see it go through the water. Can we have a zoom on the sponge, please? Oh, good eye. Might be a small caliphagus. I'm not quite sure. Thanks, you can come Thanks. wide. are wondering what's our primary objective on this expedition and in general on the dive is we are uh, collecting samples uh, rock samples for um, aging these ancient seamounts um, we also collect rock samples for microbial analysis and then uh, we have taken some biological samples um, depending on sort of uh, what's recommended from some of our scientists ashore. Um, and then we are also taking uh, samples just of the surrounding water for environmental DNA purposes. Um, so yeah, um, and just in general, nobody has ever um, explored the areas that we are exploring. So you know, getting an opportunity to see what the bottom looks like and get an idea of the uh, animal biodiversity and density is always um, of interest. There's a couple fish, of fish there. There's two. Both pointed in the same direction. They are... Yeah, they're pointing in the direction of the current, north to south. Cool. Are they, they're just small halosaurs. Yeah. Yeah, where's that other one? Just there below. it is. There it Hello. is, yeah. Halosaur. Trevor, got a question for you. Okay. Someone's wondering if you remember the wolf eel living in the wreckage of the steamship Ituna in 2016. I don't know if you're involved in that one. Steamship Tuna? Ituna, I-T-U-N-A, Ituna? Ituna. Ituna. That rings a bell. Uh, Bridge nav. What was the name of the thing? Steamship Ituna. I T U. No, no, no. The fish. Oh, we have uh, a wolf three zero eel. Meters bearing oh. two five zero, please. Hmm. Oh, so many Thank shrimp. <laughs> Vaguely. I don't know if I was. Was I on that cruise? I recognize the name of that thing for some reason. What does a wolf fish look like? The wolf eel. What it's is got that this wolf falling eel. through it's got the right? Head. Oh my god! Sorry. They're huge. Right over here. Holy moly! It's gone now. It's off screen. Oh, okay. Sorry. It's all right. Yeah, wolf eel. They got a gnarly head. Oh I seem gosh. to remember a wolf eel poking out of a something, and then shaking its head violently. <laughs> Chrysogorgia coming in. Uh, looks like another Norella giant boulder. Primnoid. So 
Somebody's wondering how some of the animals get named. Weren't we discussing a couple dives ago that people will name it after other scientists, but not necessarily scientists will name it after themselves? Yeah, it's not, I that's not allowed. I, not allowed, yeah. It's usually the way. Bad form. What's the first letter of Primnoid? Is it P as in Papa? Yes. Thank you. Are we fully zoomed out? Uh, except for the shroud, yeah. Yeah, okay. Thanks. Some pretty big boulders that have just rolled down here. Mm -hmm. Yep. Another primnoid. Yep. Yeah. So is this seamount one that we think was above the surface at one point? Uh, what do you think from looking at its shape? Say probably. No? No. Is it flat? Yeah. Uh, no, it's deceptive in this oh. red light on a black and white printed <laughs> image. Um, so both of these summits are rounded. Um, oh, got it. Okay. So most likely it was not ever above the sea surface. Could be deceptive though. Could have you could have had coral mounds that didn't get abraded away um, if it was relatively shallow. So kind of hard to tell, but it doesn't have a characteristic flat top. Are most of the flat top geodes that in this area, are the flat tops all at the same sea level or the same depth? No, no, no they're not. Interesting. So the dive we're going to, we may um, go, well, we've, uh, already have done a dive on King George Seamount, which is south of us. Uh -huh. It's crinoid up here. Um, the summit of King George is roughly 600 meters, which is shallower than Nootka that we're diving on today. Um, Bridge, nav. But we've also had some flat top geos that are deeper. Can we move 30 mm -hmm. meters bearing 240, please? Thank you. How confident are we that the flat top is from coming out of the surface? Um, pretty confident. It's like a, that flat top is uh, from the volcano getting eroded away right. uh, and then having a coral reef on top of it. Yeah, it's a very characteristic look and it's not something, you don't typically find volcanoes that just have that structure. Roger. They'll have more of a conical shape. It's almost like a perfectly round circle there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Looks like a Paragorgia with zoanthids off to our left, which we've seen a couple times on this dive.
If you were wondering, um, do we have a favorite dive site that we've done so far? <laughs> I think you're on mute, Diane. I think you're on mute. What's this? Survey says. <laughs> Chrysogorgia. I think it's a black coral. Oh, weird. Yeah, no. Is it? A, yeah, go ahead and zoom there, please. Oh, yeah, it's that pale black coral that oh, we've been yeah. seeing. Can we get a tighter zoom if possible? Yeah. Full zoom. Thank you very much. Has a few friends. And a little squat lobster on the back side. Oh, yeah. We get might have oh, three. Two of them, lobsters. actually. Yeah. There's a white one down below. Oh. Okay, you I can come wide. Thank you. Got to find some papers on why they're colored the way they are. Hi, mm. mm. Terrier. Yep. That one looks a little healthier than what we've been seeing, which is nice. I'm not sure which type of black coral that was. This is I, my weakness. I don't know these very well. Are we partial on this little pink thing here? Partial on the pink thing, please. I think it's a mushroom coral. Yep. Yep. Okay, thanks. Yeah, thank you. What's the yellow above that pink? I not sure. Oh, sun's coming up or is already up or on its way up. Looks like a C pen there. I don't know if you guys happen to be up about an hour before sunset and not in here. <laughs> <laughs> Um, there is, during the month of April, a planetary alignment of four planets that are, that make like a perfectly parallel, or perfectly straight line pointing to the moon. Oh. And so from like the horizon to the moon, you see Jupiter, Venus, uh, Mars, and then Saturn, and they're super bright. But you can yeah, they see are it. really bright. Wow, it's that's a cool. Very small cool. fish. We'll definitely all be off. in here. Yeah, we'll all be in here. <laughs> we'll miss that, but it sounds cool. An hour before sunrise. I'll show or you the sunset? picture. Sunset. Sunrise. Oh, sunrise. Yeah, yeah sunrise. Another Paragorgia and What's mushroom that? coral, and there's a sea star. Two, two of yeah. them, I think. Yeah. yeah. You want any zooms on the sea stars? Sure. Okay, go ahead. Let's go with the super leggy one. Far or the away. one. Yeah. Oh, there's two. Okay. Start with this guy and move sure. over. This is not leggy. It looks like his legs are uneven. It's like he used to be leggy. Battlestar. Maybe he's yeah, regrowing some <laughs> legs there. <laughs> Battlestar. Okay, <laughs> can we look at the okay. other one? You can come out halfway. Let's see if I can find him. There he is. Oh, he is oh, wrapped oh, around. Oh, that's cool. The this is... Oh, bonk. oh, sorry. Sorry, Star. He's wrapped. What is the little red niblet above it to the right? Red niblet. Uh, I think you're talking frame? about this. Oh, it's like a little. Mm -hmm. Oh, the actual niblet. Yeah. Oh. oh. And there's a xenophyophore. It's a polyp of some kind. Let me see if I can. A little lobster or a shrimp or something. A crustacean. Bridge nav. Yeah, hard to tell. Okay, come on. Oh, yeah, you're right. right. Three it zero is a meters bearing two four zero. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, there's another sea star. Oh, yeah. Did you say that we're expected to get up to 600 meters? Uh, not on this dive. We're going to get to 900, though. 900. Okay, thanks. King George Seamount has a oh, summit of 600. Yes. That's right, that's right. Which we'll hopefully do a bounce dive on. Oh, can we get a partial on this? You bet. Go ahead. What are
are you, my fine friend? <laughs> I do not know this one. Come wide, Steve. I'm going to get close to him. We can do a polyp zoom. I'm going to plow these rocks. Yeah, come on. Okay, go ahead. Ooh, where are you going? Where are you going now? That's not right. Oh yeah, nice. Oh, yeah. Thank I you. I just don't know what's happening. That's good. And dust cloud. Uh, yeah. Right, let's go. Thanks for the close-ups. I'll wait for our Weird. friends ashore to help us ID that one because I don't know what it is. A red gorgia there. Oh yeah. Oh, right. oh, oh yeah. yeah. Pretty. Oh. Can you give me a partial, please? Thank you. So Very interesting wispy. how they spiral like that. Mm -hmm. It's just like how it's beautiful. Has a few little associates. I don't know what that sort of dark maroon. Oh yeah, I don't know. A little dot down there. So I think that's a Ritagorgia magnus spiralis. Oh, a pretty. It was like magnus pale pink. Spiralis. Yeah. Come up on Delta, please. It's got a oh, wider it whirl. Yeah. Sure. Going back to that really when we were saying that, that stone mm -hmm. almost looked like perfectly circular, or perfectly round. The viewers wondering if that's maybe erosion or maybe just broke off that way. I guess it could be a number of things, not sure. Yeah, I don't know. It's another leggy sea star and a paragorgia. Mm. Is it just me or is the van exceptionally cold today? It is it's exceptionally, exceptionally cold, cold today. It is. <laughs> I should have, yeah. I am my freezing. Feet, my feet seeds are cold. When we got up this morning, our room was so hot, I thought I'd never get cold ever again. <laughs> <laughs> what room are you in? What room is hot? 50. Really? That's really? usually like the coldest one of oh, all. Oh, man. Really? You can check to see if your AC is on. Oh. Maybe. He isn't, or er, sorry. Uh, 5051 don't have the same AC system as oh. the other ones. It's the uh, same one as the shop. Can we get a partial on wow. this? Wow. Yep. That's a larger fan than we've seen. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. There's a little red nugget at the bottom right, too. Oh, yeah. Retracted mushroom coral, maybe? Yeah. Oh, wow. That's beautiful. I think this is a Jason Isis, but I'm not quite sure. Is it possible to get a par uh, closer view on the... Um, stocks. Yeah. Just so we ahead. can confirm if it's a bamboo. Oof. I don't see any nodes. I also do not. That's a great zoom. Thank you. All okay. Right, Bridge you, nav. Can we move three zero meters bearing two three zero, please? Thank you. Sea anemone. Why is he looking that way? <laughs> is he sad? <laughs> that a lot of those seem to face down. That's mm. funny.
No, it might have been a primnoid, that big fan that we saw. That's the little guy beside the Herogorgia. Zoom in there, please. It's a Chrysogorgia, mm -hmm. I think. Mm -hmm. Oh no, it's a Hemicorallium. With a Paragorgia? Yeah. Yeah, okay, thank you. What's the pink under the boulder? Pink under the boulder. The large oh, boulder center, yeah, lower right pink. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, to by. Victor Gorgia, I think. Okay, go ahead. That's nice. Yeah, good yeah, guess. Yeah. Or good, good, uh, With a brittle or star. ID. Or it's a stolen Ifrin. No. Okay, thanks. Hard to tell. There's a Xenophile 4 right there in the center. What do the anemones eat at these depths? I assume they just grab things in the water column. Filtering. Filtering, yeah. Can we do a partial zoom on this? I think it's a sea pen. Okay, it's a very rocky area for a sea pen. It very well could be. Let's find out. Go ahead. Yep. Mm. Cool. Thank you. Cradle star. I think it was a protoptilian. What's so underneath the rock there? Mm -hmm. uh, there's something. something hanging down there. Yeah. Can you zoom in, please. Whoops, whoopsies. Oh. Huh. It looks like an anemone yeah. of some sort, but it's yeah. hard to identify yeah. with that orientation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's pretty. Mm hmm. Tiny little oh brittle star down there. What's so the little uh, white corally thing? Yeah, on the right. Oh, those are stolen ephrin. Stolen ephrin. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Looks like the, there might be some current here. Is the are you feeling more current? Mm, I haven't really stopped to assess. That sea anemone was swinging in the wind. I'll get a little ahead here, and then I'll yep. stop and assess. Just both the stolen ephraim and the anemone tentacles were kind of dancing. Coming up to a bit of a steeper section. Let's hold off on the next ship move. Okay. You can keep this one going though. It's a bit more rubbly here, so not as dense with animals. Eh, maybe not. Maybe I was wrong. Mm. Eh, it's not bad. No, you can keep going. Call it in. Yeah. Bridge nav. Okay, I'll check current here. Can we have another step three yeah. zero meters bearing two three zero, please? Thank you. All right, I'm dead stick. Okay. It's a little fish. It's just went into a rock. Barely any current. Interesting. Hmm. Okay. Hey, thanks. thanks. Can we get a partial on this? Yep. Okay, go ahead. Paragorgia. It's polyps retracted. Thank you. Thanks. You come wide. Mm, there's another one up yep. there to the left. Yep. Several of them on this dive. And the stars that are wrapped around the Paragorgia aren't like feeding on them like the other ones that we see, or do we know? Or are they just more just trying to get higher up into the. Yeah, they're using the Paragorgia as structure yeah. to get themselves higher into right. the current. 
Although it doesn't seem that there's much current here. Yeah. Yeah, it didn't uh, Annabelle in some was. of your research, sea stars predate the bamboo and the coral, but brittle stars are filter feeding, right? Yes, I'm pretty sure. From kind of my very novice. Yeah. Mission for today's dive for the viewer who's to wondering. Um, mushroom coral and another Eritogorgia, Magnus Brallis. Mm -hmm. With a brittle star? With a... Oh. Cool. Uh, but yes, we're still collecting rocks. We've already collected one for um, our geologist who's on board, um, who's interested in the age of the seamount. Um, we also collect rocks for microbial analysis and uh, water samples for environmental DNA. Some little and Norella in both the right and left side of the frame. Another shrimp. Oh, shrimp. I've been seeing so much pink lately on all of our dives. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there was a question earlier about our favorite dives, and one mm. of mine was the unnamed north dive mm -hmm. where we had so much yellow and purple yeah which is a little yeah. different than what we see down here where we see these bottle brush chrysogorgia and these pale white pink norella was that the dive with the yellow bolosomas no that's one of mine when really? they when they started to get really dense and we just saw them yeah. everywhere and then we zoomed in and you could really see the inside and all of the stars. It's yeah, really that cool. was on Loudon. It's really cool. Um, do we ever turn all of our lights off to see light emitting life? Uh, I don't think so. Usually it's no. important for us to <laughs> keep our lights on so we can see where we're going and uh, especially if we're trying to sample so we need to be able to survey what's going These on. These cameras also aren't low light cameras oh, yeah. that would That's be amenable exactly. to seeing bioluminescence. Steven, if you did your documentary down here for like 24 hours or a long time period, what type of light would you use? What type of light? Yeah. I was actually just talking to Trevor off SPL about trying some different shots. Um, so one thing we might try is using um, the porch light uh, kind of exclusively so we're not lighting Looks up like the ground. Looks like a small califacus, mm. califacus sponge here on oh, this yeah. rock sheet. Um, but I would also use, try to like get a backlight Zoom behind in, things. Mm. Think, you know, something we don't have here is like light from behind, yeah. which can really help make things pop. It looks like some hydroids have yeah, take colonized the, the stem. The right? stem, yeah. Thank you. Thanks. Nice Victor Gorgia. Yeah, really there. tall Victor Gorgia Ooh, in yeah. the background. Just sticks right out. Okay, Steve, so go ahead. Well, purple uh, is a little bit more pronounced. Yeah. It is, yeah. It's not as lavender, pale, more what we were used to seeing in other dives. I wonder what causes Trevor, them to be more flying towards it. I might. I'm not very stable, and no, I'm probably going to bonk, but... Another time. All right, I'll try it. Yeah. Uh, Is that yeah. one whole star, or... No, it's Multiple four separate ones. ones. Oh, okay. Thank you. I was like, dang, it's really long arms. We're getting steeper now. That matches high pack. Yeah, and it's going to get even steeper as <laughs> so we keep going. Cool. Ideally, we'll do a uh, watch change handover right at the sketchiest spot. Uh, perfect. <laughs> right as we're coming out from underneath the overhang. I can't remember what cruise that was on. I remember I brought Herc in to this thing up against the wall and then realized later that we were under like a 30 meter overhang mm. and there was an I was stretched out to the end of the Argus 
tether at that point, and we're not sure or not if we rubbed the 6-8 on the cliff. Oh. oh. There was stuff raining down from above, and we're like, oh, let's back oh. out of there. It was, a, it was a massive cavern thing. Where was this at? I don't remember. Okay. <laughs> I don't even remember what year. Sounds familiar to me. I think, yeah, it was a really, really ex like extremely defined columnar basalt still standing. Can we get a partial on this? Okay, zoom in, please. Looks like zoanthids. It does look like zoanthids attached to an old stock of some variety. So do the zoanthids eat, for example, the paragorgia, or do they just use it as a midwater column thing? That's a good question. I don't know the answer. I think they're just colonizing the surface. I'm not... Oh, there's something oh. running down the hill yeah. there. <laughs> um, I'm not sure if they're parasitizing the coral. Yeah, I'm wondering if it's like a predation or more of a smothering. Hmm. You know what we haven't seen on this expedition that is uh, the acrobatic snails. Oh yeah. Are the tumbling and snails. Yeah. Yeah. Acrobatic snails. Yeah, they're pretty That's amazing. <laughs> that sounds they cool. Are. Coming up on they this live boulder. up to the name. <laughs> <laughs> it's, a it's a nice boulder. Yeah, nice broken. It's like a pillow. cracked dinosaur egg. Or yeah, oh, pillow yeah. is what I meant. Yep. Also like a cracked dinosaur egg. <laughs> Look at this tiny Victorgia. Yeah. Can you zoom in on that, please? That is... Whoops. A lot going on. Oh, yeah. 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 It's a party on this rock. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thank you. I can't dilly-dally too much here. I sense a cliff ahead. Yeah, <laughs> it's not, yeah. not yet, but it could be. I'm hoping for a cliff ahead. We need like a wool blanket back here, man. It's cold. It is. I don't know why it's exceptionally cold I'm never cold, cold in here. <laughs> very cold. It is very cold today. Like my leg is starting to ache. <laughs> it's so cold. <laughs> You have to ditch the chair and just start doing lunges. I know. Acrobatic snails are Gaza species for Trevor. Or what? That's from uh, Chris Kelly popping in. Oh. He wanted to what was that, let what was you the know. Thing said? Acrobatic snails are Gaza species. Gaza species. Gaga? Gaza. 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 Like the Gaza <laughs> Strip. for another move? Okay. I can try and look some of that up, see what else Bridge I can. Bridge nav. Can we have another step? Three zero meters, two three zero. Thank you. Trevor, do you mind coming off the wall a little bit and panning right and left? For a couple of new Looks like there's a sea star there. Viewers, thanks for joining us. All right, close your eyes. Yep, we're going to pan here. So if you get motion sick, sea star. close your eyes. Okay, that's looking left. Okay, that's south. And close your eyes again. I'm looking away. Will you want to look at the sea star after there, Beth? Yeah. Okay. If we can keep it in. Keep it in mind. And you can open your eyes. This is looking right. It's looking northwest. Great. Okay, let's come back to find that sea star. Oh, and here's another little shrimp. <laughs> they really <laughs> want. They really want to be photographed <laughs> on this. It's the first time I've seen one of those this minute. They are really auditioning today. <laughs> okay, zoom in on the star, please. This one looks so ghost-like from far yeah. away. Oh. 
It looks like blurry, but it's yeah, yeah. It's, it's like kind of blurry hangs image. around it. Yeah. I think it's still a chicken star, or whatever we call mm -hmm. the chicken star. Chicken star. I think it looks more like the slime star that we've seen. Yeah, a it's bit. not. Um, zoom, it's please? not the one we saw last night because it's not one of the cookie stars. It doesn't have that edge. Oh right. Yeah. Um, this is the slime star, Terraster. Thank you. You can come wide. Thanks. Terraster has a silent P there in front of it. Oh, for thank you. I those of you all yeah. enjoying. Like pterodactyl. Oh. Can you just spell it or like for me? Pteropod. <laughs> P-T-E-R-A-S-T-E-R. Uh -huh. -E -E it okay. looks like a distant relative of the pterodactyl. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fish. there's a little fish. 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 Oh, it's two, fish. two little two, fish. Yeah. Um, can we get pa uh, pan crinoid? right for this uh, crinoid? See yes. what it's attached to. Oh. Okay, it's a Paragorgia, mm -hmm. I yeah. believe. Go ahead, zoom in the crinoid. And it's like retracted, or like I feel like they're usually a little bit more spread out. Yeah. yeah let's get that fern thing going on. Oh, yeah. I think that's a hemichorallium. Okay, you can come wide. And to our left, Kay. there was like a little translucent purple ball. Yeah, I saw that thing. A little micro cucumber or something. Yeah, there we go. It's over there. There's another one of these leggy... I think it's a primnoid. Oh. I'm not sure. Okay, stop that. Chris Kelly, if you know what this is, we'll come back and look at it. We saw something like that earlier. Okay, zoom in, please. Ooh. Sea cucumber. Oh, look at that. See the underside a little bit. Okay. Okay. Come wide. And if we can get a zoom in on that white coral to our right. Yeah. The trifecta. Go ahead. A lot going on here on this little cliff. Yeah. Wow. Oops. Bonk. Um, can we get a tighter shot of the polyps? Pose there. Thank you. Okay, we can come wide. Okay. Mm -hmm. Come up on Delta, please. Coming up. Okay. Okay. Well, that's what I was also thinking, Chris, that it was a Norella primnoid. Just slightly different version than we've seen on other dives. Ready for a move? Yeah. Okay. Bridge nav. Can we move three zero meters? Fish. Palosaur to our bottom zero, right. Please. Thank you. Mm. Looks like we're kind of on a paragorge going by. Point. So. Little split in that rock. Yeah. What's that little white wormy? Oh, is it gonna be gone for life? Ooh, white wormy. Oh, a little fish. It's a oh, little I fish. Oh, I see what yeah. you're saying. <gasps> oh, oh. Oh. Go ahead, zoom oh. Oh, it's a fish. Tiny halosaur. Oh my gosh, how cool is that? Yeah, it does look like a tiny little halosaur. And there's a sea urchin. Huh. Thanks, you can come All right. Bye. Wow. Can I get a reset, please? Yep. Oh, Sanef, a branket eel. Oh. Thank you. You're welcome. Oh, okay. I can see the difference now. It was not a halosaur? Halosaur? Correct. It was a. Cinephobranchid eel. Looked like an iliophis. 
I think. Nice looking sponge here. Oh yeah, nice healthy Walteria there. Several attached organisms. Brisingid. A rather large Brisingid sea star with some battle wounds. Maybe. Chrysogorgia there in the center of the frame. Can we get a partial zoom on this, please? Mm -hmm. Okay, zoom in there, please. Hmm. Slightly different type of Chrysogorgia, I think, than what we've seen earlier. Thank you. With a squat lobster. Another shrimp swimming by. <laughs> Does Herc have any sound recording capabilities? What I learned is no, I think. And even if it did, it'd be super loud. So it'd be kind of hard to catch any cool deep sea audio. I try to record the sound of bird noise as well. Hanging a microphone out of your car on at highway speed. Yes. <laughs> we have a closer look at this sponge here? Mm -hmm. Ooh, there's a lot okay, going go on there. Yeah, so it's a small Caliphacus sponge. You can come wide. Thanks. Oh, there's a lot of Chrysogorgia in the frame here. Aside from some small variations, this hill has been pretty linear. Yeah. been pretty much the same slope. What do we got over here? There we go. And of course, this <laughs> shrimp is like, no, 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 look <laughs> no, at no, me. No, 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 look at this. <laughs> I believe this is a polyopagon sponge. It's definitely the biggest sponge we have seen so far on the dive. Absolutely. Can we get some closer zooms on the inside? Yeah, go ahead. Ah. Wow. Wow. Oh. Wow. Uh, I believe those are little snails. Oh, yeah, cool. we spoke of snails, yay. They look like little pearls. They do. On yeah. lace. They do. Uh-huh. That is beautiful. Great, so delicate. we can come wide. Thanks. Intricate bridge nav. Can we have another step? Three zero meters bearing two four zero. Thank you. For our next ship's move, can we have a more like 270 type orientation? 
Yeah. Thank I'm you. trying to get Herc to this little okay. suggestion yeah, sure. of a ridge. Okay. Yeah. Fair enough. Suggestion okay. of a ridge. Yeah. <laughs> It was called a pseudo knoll, and now we're a suggestion of a ridge. Oh, What's right. yellow there? Can we get there? a partial on this? Yes, we can. Okay, go ahead, Steve. It might be a black coral. Maybe. Okay, thank you. It definitely has like the black, a black blackish looking skeleton, like sort of underneath the yellow. Oh no, I can't. The gorgia is what Chris is saying. That's no, a gor um, not a black coral. Viewer was wondering um, if we know which side is the outflow on that sponge. I know we've been talking about that a lot with some of the other types of sponges. That would be interesting to know. Slightly different shape from. There's a Victor Gorgia off to the right. Some of the ones we've been seeing. Yeah, so I think the general consensus is that the flow, often they orient with the convex scythe uh -huh. in the predominant direction of current, more of a hydrodynamic. Um, placement, at least for some of the other ones we've seen, especially the stocked sponges. Mm -hmm. Yep. Not sure about polyopagon. And we don't we don't know how old it is, <laughs> but it's pretty big. Can so. we get a partial on this, please, Trevor? It's been around for a while. Sure. Very crusty rocks here. Thanks, you can come wide. Oh, there, look at that little squat lobster mm -hmm. walking around. Okay. Um, Trevor, w if it's convenient, or when it's convenient. Mm -hmm. Can we do another one of our pan looks? Yeah, sure. Now is totally fine. So the white coral we were examining just a moment ago was a smaller version of one of those Norella primnoids. So if you get motion sick, maybe close your eyes while we do this little pan, pan motion to see what's to our right and to our left. Sheet flow as far as the eye can see. On that side, yeah. Yeah, it's steep too. It's come left. Hmm. Hmm, yeah, a lot of sheet flow also here. So sheet flow. Yeah. Wild. Bridge nav. Can we have a step three zero meters bearing two five five, please? Thank you. Another fish going by. You can come down on Delta. Okay.
Huh. Our water temp is up to like almost 2.4. Can we get a partial on that sea star? Those are some cool colors. Wow. Yeah. Great. Fades either. out to the yeah. tips. Very. It reminds me of some of the corals we saw that were like white on the ends and mm -hmm. pink. For the viewer wanting to have more information about depth, if you want to keep up, um, you can go to Grafana, and you can find that on this the Nautilus Live.org webpage. And if you go to the panel that's all the way Ooh, to the right, large sponge. under tech and go to more data, you can find Grafana, and it'll tell you Herc's depth and water temp and oxygen concentration and a bunch of other stats. Look at that happy so. shrimp. <laughs> They've all been pretty Sponges happy. Like We're currently diving at 1,640 Can we get meters. a partial on that little floaty? Ooh, Is that going to be possible? Ah, good luck. Oh, Steve, oh, zoom oh, at your leisure. Out, in and out. <laughs> <laughs> it's moving so fast. Yeah. Yeah. And it's so tiny. Okay, thanks. <laughs> I would say not. <laughs> Is this the same kind? Of yeah, sponge? polyopagon. Yeah, sponge. polyopagon. Can you turn off some lights except porch light on? Yeah. Let's try that out. Let's try it out. As I'm coming Let's around see how here. That looks. Are we going to try some different glamour shots? Yeah. Mm. Try killing the mids. Ooh. Very dramatic. Dramatic very, shadows. Very dramatic. <laughs> <laughs> Can we get uh, lasers off for a moment? Yeah. Can we get some still cam shots, please? Yep. Let's try down lights on. Uh, that is. No. Mm. Why are they called polyopic? Okay, um, thanks. Yeah, we can go back to normal config. <coughs> Doesn't it mean like many shapes? Maybe, I don't mm. know. That's a good question. Poly. What do you think there, Steve? Down lights on or off with porch light? What was better? I don't know, I like it was different off, so. I mean, um, we turned off oh, man, all the three top lights right, for most of that, and at the very end we turned down lights on. Yeah, I sea stars and starfish like are the same thing. Off. Sea stars is just cool. I mean, just as a dramatic look at it, maybe yeah, more sure. scientifically correct, but uh, different common names used in different places. Another fish. Oh, two, two fish. fish. Oh, bridge nav. Mm. Can we move three zero meters, bearing two six zero, please? Thank you. Some big broken sp stock, so I'm Ooh, wondering wow. if we're going to find some live ones at some point. Mm. It's a really big base for not a lot of bamboo. What what's happening here? Fish. Can you zoom in on that base, please? Oh wow! Oh, huh. wait, Weird. what is that attached? What it what is, is attached, happening? Yeah, what band. is happening here? <laughs> black band with no flesh on it or no whatever. Oh. Kay. Maybe it was oh, just one oh, okay. growing <laughs> off of the <laughs> old stock. Oh, okay. Or I thought it was I didn't thought it was floating in space for a second. Yeah, same. Okay, now there's a band side. there. Go ahead. Huh. Huh. Like it broke off? Bizarre. That is that really is, weird. That is bizarre, yeah. That's it's like a magnet. Okay. Yeah. 
Those two huh. things don't look like they belong together. Yeah, no. no. It's like somebody just like taped it <laughs> <laughs> together. Can we get a snap zoom on that anemone there? Snap zoom, please. Or Thank white you. tips. Different little species. coral, but or a little sponge behind it. Nice, thanks. thanks. We were talking about how the sea stars and some of the coral had the white tips, but that thing also had a white tip. There's a cup coral attached to this rock on the right. A little hemichorallium, it looks like, on the side. Tiny, tiny little corals up here. Tiny Norella, tiny M.A. Corallium. Can we get some partials, if possible, on these um, little white mm -hmm. attachments? Yeah. Zoom in on the white thing, please. Okay, looks like maybe where a former barnacle was, and now uh, there's a little, Boop. little coral, a little anemone there. Thanks, you can come wide. All right, thanks. This crust is really quite dramatic. Almost seems like maybe it's not a sheet flow, but actually just a pavement of crust. Oh, maybe. Yeah, good thinking. Someone's wondering if the sponge would probably feel soft or hard. 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 It'll feel, uh, yeah, crunchy. Crunchy. Mm. I would second that from the sponge samples that we've taken. We haven't taken a polyopagon, but some of the other ones are very, yeah, brittle and granular. Do they break easy when you're tweezing them out? Okay. Yes, they do. When you handle them, do you just wear nitrile gloves? Or do you have to wear something else? Uh, just wearing nitriles. You do need to be a little bit careful of like spicules and things like that. But yeah, I was going to say, would they poke through the glove? Uh, potentially. If yeah. Ouch. Bridge nav. Can we move three zero meters bearing two seven zero, please? Thank you. Actually, Lynette, can we cancel that ship's move? I I kind of want to poke around on this Bridge crust nap. a little bit. Can we cancel that move? Thank you. Trevor, I'm curious to try to like, um, where we... S we can hold, hold position. position here. Say again, Beth. Thank you. Um, I'm curious about this material, um, that it might be just like a crust overriding everything. Okay. Um, so where we see it kind of on an edge, if we can maybe just try touching it with a manipulator and seeing if it breaks off. Roger. Maybe just underneath us looked like a good spot, but I'm not sure. Put how it right here. That sure. Yeah, yeah. That that could work. Sure. I'm going to guess it will not break off. Let's find out. Yeah, like either over here or any of this stuff. See craft on pull, please. Do 
put any zooms first, or should I just go for it? Yeah, n n yeah, you can just go for it. Okay. This is just a curiosity check. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. Future sure porch light on, please. Yes. A little bit crumbly under there, but. No, it looks pretty solid. Yeah, okay. Is that enough, or do you want to try yeah, and respond? Yeah, no, I, I think that that's good. Okay. I'm just curious. Curious. Roger. Did that. Uh, okay, Lynette, you can go ahead and put that ship's move back in. Okay. Bridge, nav. <laughs> can we move three zero meters bearing two seven zero, please? Thank you. All right. The viewer wondering about bioluminescence and if we ever look for that. Um, someone had also asked that uh, earlier, and uh, we do not turn off the lights. Um, our cameras are also just not equipped to really detect bioluminescence, but it definitely would be cool. And have fossils of extinct animals ever been found? Um, I think Beth had mentioned that a beaked whale, like the front, had been found um, in, a, in a rock before several times, so sometimes, yeah. Another sponge coming up. Oh yeah, here we go. Trevor, while we're by this sponge, can we, but not too close, um, go off stick and see which way the current is going? Yeah, you bet. So Ooh, I can tell you which way my, momen my momentum's going. Does it seem to be pushing you to the north? Slightly to the north, but that could have just been my oh, that, momentum. That makes sense. It uh, matches with the orientation of the sponge. Roger. So if the current direction has changed a little bit as we've come up uh, oh, I see. on this slope. Interesting. It was coming from our north. Now it's kind of pushing us to the north. That was confusing me about the orientation of the sponges. Hey, actually, can you turn a couple lights on, on the, on, on the, the Adelano? Yeah. yeah. Sorry. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Not more. Um, Beth, can I do some pan left, pan rights here? Okay. Yes. Is that valuable? I just want to see the tether is all. Okay. Some nice big swell sets coming in here periodically, uh -huh. bumping us around up here in the van. Uh, 
Is there something in particular you're looking for in the tether, Trevor? I just wanted to figure out a wrap situation before handover. Okay. Okay, thanks. No problem. You can turn lights off. And see, we got a mini Zeus Iris thingy thingy. Coming up on Delta. What's that? I'm coming up on Delta. Sure, that's not no. bad. I'm out in front of you. Okay. That's a fine Delta. All right. I haven't seen a shrimp for a few minutes. <laughs> I'm sure they're still around. Seen so many of them this morning. They're doing a costume change. Got to, you know, a uh, Walteria come back. With some crinoids on the left side here. Oh, yeah. Very stark, the white with the yellow. Got one or two ROV questions for the front row, if you guys. Yeah, go ahead. Minute. Um, someone's wondering how much force can the arm and the claw exert on Hercules? Sorry, I gotta turn your volume up. Can you say that again, please? Yeah, how much force can the arm and claw exert on Hercules? Oh, I actually have a really good answer to that. So, imagine an empty soda can. The manipulator can grab it without so much as a dent. Now, imagine a full, unopened, sealed soda can. The manip can grab it enough to pop it. Mm. That's the difference between grip force one and nine. One being yeah, the most delicate? One being is most delicate, yeah. Um, has this been verified with a deck test? Yes. <laughs> uh, nice. There's <laughs> a video if you want to watch. I have a question. That's when the cool. manipulator is extended fully, like when you were poking at that crust, is mm. it does the strength decrease like as it extends? Like or could it mm. you know could it cause it push yeah. down as strong out there as it can if it was tucked in? Yeah, it does decrease just based on the moment arm. Um, but I think it still has way too much strength, even way out there. I don't know the specs off the top of my head, but I want to say it's 200 pounds full extension or something. 150, 200 pounds? Yeah. I don't know. I'd like to see the video. That sounds cool. Yeah, happy to share the video with anyone that wants to see it. Oh, second question is someone's wondering, do you ever have to worry about the current uh, slamming Hercules into rocks or like structures at the bottom? Oh, heck yeah. yeah. More <laughs> concerned with slamming Atalanta into rocks and structures because, you know, Herc regularly hits rocks and structures. Like <laughs> bombs. Like, <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> Atlanta's not so padded. So, yeah. And Kirk's Atlanta can knock stuff down on Herc. Yeah, uh, also bad. Yeah, that's bad. Yeah, we're very aware of the currents, and Beth, Beth has been asking regularly for current updates for science perspectives as well. So, yeah. current monitoring is an important oh, part of the dive. There's a new sea star. We haven't seen that one yet. Yeah, a little, a little white. One. white. Yeah. Oh, you get yeah. a partial zoom yeah. on that? Go ahead, Steve. Mostly been seeing orange ones over white slime stars. This is a bit different. Did we not see the purple slime star too on this dive? Mm. Or am I confusing things? Yeah, we did. Thank okay. We did. Okay. Thank you. All Come right. Wide. Can we have a partial on this? Mm -hmm. Go ahead and zoom. 
sea cucumber. Oh yeah, sea cucumber. Hmm. Very well fed one. Very. <laughs> Is that? Oh. And this might be a sea pig. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. Look at the flap and a little, little tube yeah. feet. Look at his tube feet. <gasps> Look at uh, it. Sea pig. Oh, it's the best. These are my favorite, favorite, <laughs> favorite. Who was it that said it was, they thought of spider pig? That was me. <laughs> <laughs> okay. We can come wide. Thanks. Thanks. Spider pig. <laughs> Favorite, 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 favorite. <laughs> that one was so <laughs> translucent. Instead of having that pink tint. Mm-hmm. Do we know if the colors of sea cucumbers are determined by like genetics or by like environment? Don't know. So a nice bright Victor Gorgia on the right, as well as what looks like a yellow. Can we get a partial on that yellow one? See if it. I uh, don't see it. It's below the frame, just below the Victor Gorgia. Oh, Roger. Yep. See if it's a plexord or something else. Okay, zoom in, please. We get a slightly tighter zoom if possible. Okay. Full zoom. Nice zoom. Okay, you can come wide, thank Thanks. you. Bridge nav. Can we move three zero meters bearing 275, please? We Thank haven't you. seen many plexoids on this dive, but I think that's one of them. Asako tuning in with saying, yes, it's a plexurid. She just came on the chat and instantly rewarded. <laughs> oh, here we go, another Aritagorgia. Atlanta view. Yeah, dramatic. Mm -hmm. What's the little red guy? Where the oh the oh that one I thought you had. Zoom in on this one. Some kind of coral. A little retracted mushroom coral, oh. perhaps. It's um, looks like one of those little squeezy toys. Uh -huh. Yeah. <laughs> but retract it, yeah. Thank you. Interesting. Yeah. Wow. Look at this crust. Thanks to the viewer who's saying that this is their favorite channel. We appreciate Aww. you tuning in. Channel one or channel two? <laughs> or channel Maybe. three. Or, or channel, channel three. three. I'm mm. going to assume channel one or two. Channel three is a good one, too. Percented. <laughs> Check that one out. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. Roger. Looks like one of those head scratchers. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Turn that little brisinget upside down. <laughs> I was thinking it was King George's crown. <laughs> <laughs> that too. We get a partial zoom on that, uh, what looks like a pom pom anemone. Yep. Pom pom. Go ahead. Yeah. 
There's also a what looks like a tiny little Xenophile 4 down here. Hmm. Okay, thanks. You can come wide. Thank you. Back to the favorite channel. They said channel one and channel three. <laughs> oh. Well, especially when channel three's got the nice mm -hmm. ocean shots. Looks like yep. there's another slime star over there on the left. Oh, yeah. As well as a Paragorgia. Somebody's wondering, has the annual growth rate been estimated on the corals and sponges at these depths? Hmm. I Maybe. don't think so. Don't, yeah. don't oh. know. Not sure. So that pom pom anemone was in the Liponema. I think that's genus, is that right? Can we get a partial zoom on this gray area here? Yes, we can. Okay, go ahead, Zeev. Huh. Hmm. This isn't like the demo sponge, is it? I don't think so. Oh, look at that tiny little <laughs> thing right yeah. there. Um, <laughs> it's like a brittle star with no legs. <laughs> um, yeah, strange. Can we... Um, Back out on the zoom just a little bit. I want to see the edge of the rock a little bit more. Yeah. Huh. Okay. Thanks. Um, Trevor, do you think we can try again with the poking maneuver? Oh, yeah, sure. Uh, I don't Go know full wide. Can we, uh, do we need a ship move stop for we that? We can sh just, yeah, hold position here. Sure. It'll still swing, but. Bridge nav. That's fine. Bubble and craft, please. Can we hold position, please? Thank you. Oops. So on the left-hand side of the frame, the coral that's kind of moving in the current is a metallogorgia. For the viewer wondering, Channel 2 is at Atlanta feed, so there's also always sort of a two ROV system that goes down and at Atlanta hovers over Herc, so get some great views and shots of Herc. Can you zoom in a little bit, please, Steve? So that's what that is. I'm full right already. Yeah, oh. okay, this is much more brittle. Look at that. I think I found the only brittle spot on the hole. <laughs> no. <laughs> oh no. Oh. Oh no. Yeah. Okay. Took a Ooh. couple wiggles. Can we is it possible to just pick that up and look at it? Yes. Oh. Or um it scared me. No. Just want to see kind of what its <laughs> texture looks like. Yeah. Oh boy. That's crumbly. Yeah. Yeah. Um oh, I thought that was that's just I thought it was wispy stuff for like a second. But it's not. We're getting close to a shift change, so you might start hearing some new voices um, and switching over, but that's what's happening. Yeah, that's just crust all the way down. Huh, oh. okay. Of course, I've set a sampling strategy that doesn't match with treading a sample here. Um, you want a sample here? Um, maybe, but not this. Uh, okay. Uh, is that true? How big is this? Uh, come out a little bit, please, Steve. Piece of pie. Yeah. Ten. Um, yeah, let's keep this. Let's put it in the forward bio box, please. Forward box, Roger. Oh, man. So I had originally planned to target samples higher up based on oxygen concentration, but these crusts just look too attractive to, to drive away from. Any pref preference on side? No. Okay, can you can open the forward box, please. Right. Good there. Oh, hey. Shelby. 
That's in Lambda. 148 Lambda. Thank you. Thanks a lot, Trevor. Yeah, of course. Thank you. And I think, uh, yeah, we're going to start switching out for breakfast here. And breakfast. Nice flying with everybody. See you at our next shift. Um, what's the question, Steve? Yeah, you can switch out. See ya. Everyone's changing out, but not us. Just our OV team. What do you want to look at? Checking out. What do you want to do? Let's just do whatever we want. Let's go find some critters. Yeah, I think that's a great hey, idea. Hey, I want to go find critters too. <laughs> no way. Yeah, I do. I want to stay along Wait, too. I mean, critters. that sea pig was a, here. a big fave. Aloha kakahia kakako. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I believe our front row is still settling into their... Still theirs. transitioning our watch a little bit. Mm -hmm. I get to sit with the 8 to 12 watch for a there couple was, of minutes. I know. This is exciting. There's mm -hmm. some stragglers mm -hmm. to breakfast this morning. <laughs> Any anything really cool happen on your guys' four to eight watch this morning? Really cool things always happen. <laughs> oh yeah. No, we did see some little squids though, which were mm. cool. Squiddy. Okay. Bye everybody. Have a great day, Tinkerbell. Bazinga. How are you doing over there, Diane? Oh, I'm doing great. Thank you. Appreciate it. Been a fun, busy morning. 
Mm-hmm. Can you zoom on the white corals, please? A little request from our scientists ashore. Yeah, let me get uh, Thanks, Dan. Let the pilot get settled in here. Yeah, no problem. What was the uh, macro question there? What was it? Uh, the white corals down there in the bottom left, I believe. Roger. Thank you. Chris Kelly wanted to have a little peek. Go ahead, Jeff. Zoom in. Should be good for uh, pushing a little more if you want. Look at the one on the left. It's got its pull-ups out. Unless they're different. Two different corals. Push in a little more if you want. Are both the verts turned on? Oh, can you check the uh, Rester Isolation page? Good morning. What do you think, Chris? I think this might be a white paragorgid, so type of white bubblegum right. coral. Push in a little more if you want. That's it. Sure. That's it. Okay. Thanks. Oh, look at the crab with the crab anemone. Oh, yeah. <laughs> a little one. Tucked up under the rock there. Okay, off we go. See you later, Diane. Have a great day. Dad, I'm gonna try and keep you on this little ridge here. Roger. Bridge, this is Nev. Uh, please move the ship 20 meters bearing 300. Zero zero. I was wondering what was going on. What's that, Jeff? You had the porch lights on? Uh, they were on, yeah, I didn't know when. I think they were on when we sat down. Look at there, it looks like some zoanthids, but I don't know. Yeah, could we get a zoom on the rock when you get a get chance? The uh, bridge to hold position, Katachi. Yeah, go ahead, Jeff, zoom in there. Uh, bridge, this is Nev. Please hold position. Yeah, it looks like. Please hold position. Stolen Ifrins potentially on this rock. Stolen Ifrins, you said? Yeah. Yeah, that looks great, thanks. Okay, go away. Oh, 
Wow. Big old rock. With a bunch of life on it. Pretty nice size primnoid fan there. Primnoid. Good, good. Good morning, everybody. Yeah, good morning, everyone. We're all in place. Oh. We're proceeding yeah. up the... Uh, really active crinoid down Summit here. slope of Newt Zoom Casino. There, yeah. Heading towards waypoint two. That was crazy. <laughs> Zoom in a bit more on the spastic crinoid. Oh, my God. Look at it. The dive started at 2,000 meters. We're Good. already up to 1,500 almost. Wow, that's cool. Ah, sorry. I don't have any room to turn in there. I'm up against the rock. Good morning, crinoid. This seamount looks a little different from the other seamounts we've been diving on. It doesn't have the sort of classic flat-topped geo formation. It's much more lumpy and irregular, and that's what we're exploring today. All right. I think we're good on the zoom. Thank you. Okay. We're still on the steep slope, the bottom part of the dive. So as we rise up, we'll uh, it'll get less steep for a stretch, and then steepen up again as we rise up to the shallowest point at the end of the dive. We're heading towards waypoint two, which is starting to be where it flattens out a little bit. Well, do you know what the crinoid was doing? Was it eating, perhaps? Not positive. It, um, could have been sort of waving around to catch particles in the water. How are we doing guess. for vowel samples? Vowel samples? Jeff, can We've you put the DSC two up? So two. Mm -hmm. They both in the. There's one for Beth, one for Val. Yeah. Yep. But they didn't collect. Them. No, well, they, she wanted to save them for the end. I guess she's right. gonna get two more. Okay. Oh yeah. Up. Really see how the community changes from one side of that rock to the other. Really dense to. Not so dense. Oh, looks like we have a star over here. Ooh, ski star. Terra Steriday. Terra Steriday. Slime star. And we were able to collect a slime star just the other day. Did you get to handle it? I didn't. It's pretty fun. <laughs> Am I allowed to? Do you want to zoom on the slime star? Y yeah, we get a, a quick partial zoom. Would be great. Sure. Go ahead, Jeff. I haven't seen a few of these so far this dive. Uh, the DSC has not been uh, activated on this dive yet. It really? looks like it's eating something. Like it's like directly just like covering yeah, it. That's the coral pig there on the screen waiting for a login. It's not uh, turned on yet. I'll do that. It's a good start. Turning it on would help. Yeah, we struggled a little bit at four in the morning, uh, getting everything kind of going. Um, maybe that was overlooked. Okay. It's a reddish yellow coral to the right. Can we potentially take a look at? Reddish the yellow coral. The shore interested in. Do we need Justin or Leela for that? Talking about, I can barely hear you, right? Sorry. Um, what do you say, left or right? I'm a w w further up, apparently. Sorry, I'm just getting instructions from my scientist ashore. Still can't hear you. Think Could you uh, circle it? Directly right. Oh, here we go. I think it's this one. Ah, uh, right.
Bouncer. Okay, Jeff should be good for a zoom there. Bounce here. What's up? I think he's on. He's oh. talking on SPL Sorry. right now. <laughs> he answered you on SPL. Oh, he cannot hear you. Can you t can you tell Slipped Dwight? Slipped off the rock. <laughs> Uh, try that again. Justin here. Oh, Just no, I can get him. Sorry, one sec. Okay. So there's a Plexorid Swift here. Plexorid. Some brittle stars attached. I haven't seen many of these. Thanks for the zoom. Hey, Dwight's Justin in the lounge. Looks like one of those glass bunches off up into the side over there. Is it? That one at the top. -ish. Yeah, looks like a dead one. We haven't seen too many plexorids, have we? No, not too many. Fly by zoom of that guy if you want. Sure. Well, landed, might as well zoom. Go ahead, Jeff. Ready for a move, dude? Not yet. We can hold yeah. up. Try to come in front of Argus uh, or Ar Atalanta. Yeah. Lobster in there. Come out just a bit, Forrester. Yeah, good text. Looks like something we would put ice cream in if we had any. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Coral. Yeah, we're a bit shallower tonight, Katachi, so we can, the moves will telegraph faster to Atlanta. Do corals and sponges reproduce? And if so, yeah, so well, how it's and when? more important to be out front because we will get run over. Um, it really varies in corals at least. Um, their sort of seasonality is dependent on um, the Porch pulses of organic matter from the surface, so the rain of marine snow and how that changes seasonally uh, for many species. And then there are other species who sort of just reproduce um, throughout the year, it seems, and don't have a real seasonality. Um, and so corals will either brood their larvae, so keep them internal before releasing their larvae, or uh, broadcast spawn, although that's never been observed in the wild in a deep sea. Awesome, thank you. Mm -hmm. Isn't there a big event they studied at Flower Garden Banks where they all kind of spawn at night at the full moon or something like that? Yeah, shallow water corals um, have pretty well synced uh, broadcast spawning events with right. the tides.
Chad Vase sponge there with some Brittle Star Associates. Ice cream cone. <laughs> Making up our own common names to some of these animals. A waffle cone. Okay, Paul, I should waffle be able to look with that Sounds like it would, could be used. That's actually a good one. Yeah, if you guys want to just keep us trucking towards Waypoint 2 and do zooms as we go, we All won't right. really look for a rock till we get there. Copy that. We're going to get out in front of Atlanta a little more because we're shallower, so the, we don't yep. have as much, uh, you know, it moves a little faster as we move the boat. Oh, got a Venus flytrap and enemy here. Actinos in there. I want, yeah. think. Hey Ryan, do, do these things consume nice. their food the same way a Venus flytrap plant does? I don't think they sort of snap shut in the same way. Could be wrong. Oh. I think they're sort of using their tentacles to catch stuff. Although sort of that's really pretty yeah it is really pretty I'm not too it's sure like on that one actually right. Tachi All right. just the shape is and it symmetry of it it's really cool yeah is it common for them to have kind of that like double row of tentacles on the bottom there at the top yeah I think I think this group tends to have that Okay, off we go. Compromise. <laughs> The middle of three. Is that because um, this is the scaling of her? It's funky. It actually looks better. I don't know. I'm just used to looking at it like that. No particular reason. Personal preference. Oh, okay. Pushing on this guy as we go by, Jeff. Yeah. yeah. Looks like you're at a Gorgia. So, although there's another genus that depends on how tight they're spiraling. Yeah. Mm. Looks like another uh, predatory hydrozoan on one of the branches. Okay, thank you. Go to good? Uh, yeah, we're good for a move. Mm. 20 meter move. Bridge? This is Nev. Two zero meters bearing three zero zero, please. Come up a bit if you want, Paul. Ouch.
Can they get it? No. Oh, yes. Go uh, if you get bored. If you switch your Grafana to ROV pilot less, uh, and then uh, zoom in to like 60 some percent, you'll get the uh, two depth trends here. So that's the Argus versus Herc, mm -hmm. and the bottom one is Herc's with the vertical velocity overlaid. So you'll scroll back up to the top. The bottom one, the bottom graph is just for a peak at the A-frame velocity. But what do you mean by A-frame velocity? Uh, it's how far and how fast it's going up and down. It's more for launch and recovery. Mm. And you don't need to see it during operations. So if you scroll up now, and at the top, see where the there's a little TV thing. Oh, yeah. If you cycle that a couple times, it'll put it in uh, kiosk view one more time. There you go. Oh, and so I can drag or no? Uh, no, just scroll back down now or scroll up. Yeah, now it's like this one. So mm. the delta will turn uh, red if it goes minus or over 20. Mm something to catch your eye up. The other one, they put all that clutter on it, and we don't need that for operations. It's good stuff to look at. But during ops, these are the numbers that I care about. We get real-time voltage current there, so we don't need historical data. The winch tension is now here in big green, so we don't need that on the Grafana page. So I cleaned it up a bit and uh, called it ROV pilot less. <laughs> <laughs> I find the dip trends helpful. Mm -hmm. Is the ship moving, Kataji? No, just finished our last Yeah, bit. let's try to just kind of keep it going, at, you know. Gotcha. Yeah. We can uh, switch to 40s if you want. Roger. Rich, this is up. Four zero meters bearing 290, please. Just got to remember to stop if we're going to sample. Copy that. When we do 20s, we don't have to think about stopping if we're going to sample, because that's within the range of not running over us with Atlanta. Little fishy. Oh yeah, one of them French corals. <laughs> yeah, pretty big Victorgoids, yeah. Yeah, they're usually a little tinier. I wonder why they originally discovered this this one and named it after Victor. Zoom there if you want, Jeff. Yeah, a 
lots of snake stars wrapping around the branches. Do you know where it was originally, uh, when it was found and named? I don't. I'm going to look up the species description now, or genus. My favorite color, my favorite color is purple, and this just takes purple to a whole other level of wanting me to love it even more. Okay. Beautiful zoom. I'm a fan. When, uh, when aging uh, coral, we use the stalk, yes? I can barely hear you back there. I don't know if I can turn down or what here. Yeah, and there's a... Okay, yeah. You can also measure their growth rates by repeatedly sampling them or just like imaging them a few times and, and uh, seeing how their branches are extending out. So mm. then you get know, an idea of the, the linear extension rate and how fast they're growing, like their base is growing thicker. Um, that's another way to get the idea of their age. Awesome, thank you. Back row's real quiet up here, Jeff. I got my volume in it. Do you have SPL turned down? Yeah. No, I mean turned down. Like, is it? No. Oh, so yeah. Is it zero? Maybe we're just being awfully quiet. Yeah, I can hear the front row fine. It's the back row. It's huh. somehow I wonder attenuated. Mm -hmm. I can hear him pretty well, so that's weird. Are you guys hearing me well here in the back row? No, I can barely hear you. Sounds like I you're far away from your microphone. I can hear you. I can hear you too. Yeah, I can hear her. Must be me. It's you. Maybe I'll <laughs> put my other headphone on that might help. Stand by. Let me look at this real quick. Is this better? Yeah, sorry. I only had one headphone on. I'm a bit deaf in that ear. Awesome. <laughs> Listening to too many loud ROVs and winches over the years. Yeah. Look at that, a red and a yellow right next yeah. to each other. Yeah, colorful. So zoom in there a bit. Look similar similar, faces. similar shapes, actually. That's good, thanks. Oh, and there's a pink one. That's a nice shot. Two different pink ones. They're all kind of branched similarly. It's interesting. Yep. Back one is Paracorgia. And a Hemicorallium. Yeah. Potentially a Acanthagorgia in the middle. Um, but hard to say. We can maybe zoom on that middle one. On which one? The yellow one, please. Go Come ahead. tight yep. on that one. Uh, that's better. Pull up, pop. Let's see if our scientists are sure agree with my. Canthagorgia assessment. Possibly a plexorid. There's another yellow one there. Yeah. There's one of those mucus nets we've been seeing sporadically. It's 
Still no evidence there, right? No. Mystery continues. Just so you know, I'm starting to kind of get past you and spin around to the south here. Yeah, I'll oh, get on with it here. Thanks. I don't mind being sideways a little, it drags our tether so it's not whacking you in the head. In the eyeball. Yeah. Bridge, this is enough. Four zero meters west, please. Oh, I large Pazingid sea star there. Maybe take a zoom on this one? Yeah, sure. Go ahead. Yeah. Interesting how different length the arms are. <laughs> that new arms growing or is he just... Maybe it could have been it could have been nipped off at some point. Is this a crinoid? It's a Brzingid sea star. Ah. Great, thank you. Great. Get out ahead a little, otherwise you're going to be cliff diving with Atlanta. Okay. Bit of a question we have here. Um, what gives the coral its different colors? Um, so those are different pigments. Um, I really don't know too much about what gives them different pigments or, or why. Um, like what's the ecological reason for them? Roger. Thank you. Um, but there has been some recent work sort of suggesting that they aid them in fluorescence as so some sort of uh, communication element to it. Um, and we do typically start to see them around this depth. I think those colors sort of start to emerge around 1,500 meters. Mm. Thank you. Bit of an engineering question coming up. Do they make quieter hydraulic pumps as that seems to be the main source of noise on the ROV? If they do, I haven't heard of one yet. Thank you. What do those worms on the coral do? So I think the worms that this person might be asking about will be the snake stars. Mm -hmm. So the snake stars just... I'll let Ryan answer that. Yeah, so they're just trying to get a better vantage point up on the water column because uh, they are filter feeders, so they're pulling particles out of the water. And um, being higher up gives you a, a really nice advantage um, when compared to being on the bottom because currents uh, tend to flow um, slowly right next to the bottom. But then you get a little higher up in the water column and you can, you can grab much more particles. Yeah, I'm going to keep coming to the right here. There's some more critters over there and that'll put your head more into the hill.
kind of the most important part for us, safety for uh, personnel and equipment wise, is launch recovery. So we tend to take it serious. This is nice and colorful. Yeah, really beautiful underside of this rock here. It's a huge, a huge basket star on the left side. One of the huge the basket star on the left side. Oh yeah. On the coral, yeah? yeah. Uh huh. Yep. And it looks like it's a. I could be wrong, but I'm just gonna say it. A bubblegum coral. Or. Uh, Let's take, a, take a zoom there, and we'll try to determine that. Sure. So a, I learned the other day that this, the group of basket stars, the Gorgon and Cephalidae, they get their name, Gorgos means dragon, and then Cephalid means head, so they're pushing a bit there, dragon head that. stars as well, if you really break down the name. It kind of makes sense when you look at their central disks. Look at it, it's moving. Yeah, very cool. Oh my gosh. I'm getting, um... That's good, keep the lasers in the view for me. That's so cool. I'm getting um, vibes from the Harry Potter movie that, is it the, <laughs> the, the, the Whomping Willow? Yeah. The, the Whomping that Willow that moves around. Uh -huh. That's so cool. And this is called a basket star, yeah? And there's some brittle stars or other kind of stars that are hanging out on that coral mm -hmm. also. Is this many basket stars or is this just one I think giant this is one? Just one. Wow. Let me see the one central disc. One big boy or girl. Okay. Cool. Not ready for a move yet, are you? Gotta get ahead. Yeah, let me catch back up again there. Rocks look very crusty. It's a lot quicker to run over us in this shallow water. The uh, 1500 range is, for some reason, it swings a lot faster. That extra thousand meters makes a big difference. a lot more of these white corallids too that we haven't seen much of in this expedition. Uh, I believe it was Pleurocorallium. I wonder if we're ready to introduce ourselves now. Sure. Okay. Uh, here we go. Let's see what I got on my notes here. The other one we go by to Katachi, especially shallower, is that um, sort of Atlanta within the 20 meter range ring there. Well, once yeah. we get back in the box, that'll be outside. The okay, let's share our name, our position, and I'll try and say the Hawaiian name of your position after you say that. And then um, share one life hack that you, you do. Now I need to think of mine. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna um, Did nominate. Did you say life I, hack? I don't have the brain cells for that this early. No. In the <laughs> so my life hack would be not to answer the question about a life hack. <laughs> Maybe we should change that. No life hack. Let's say. <laughs> oh, no, I have a good one. <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay, okay, Kotachi, you go first then. <laughs> Hi, my name is Kotachi. I'm sitting in the front row to the right. I'm the navigator or Ho'okele. Um, my life hack is, uh, so unfortunately I, I always get up in the middle of the night to go to the bathroom and I learned a fun fact that the reason, the real reason why a lot of pirates have the eye patch is not because they're blind in one eye, but because they keep one eye adjusted to the dark uh, and one eye adjusted to the light so they can move um, to the bottom of the, or they go inside the ship and outside uh, without losing their ability to see. 
And um, well, every time I went to the bathroom, I'd turn on the lights. Um, I'd be like blinded. And then <laughs> after I turned them off, I couldn't see. <laughs> so <laughs> this was kind of a headache. And I started uh, leaving one eye closed. <laughs> And it works. <laughs> works like a charm. <laughs> Thank you for that life hack, Kotachi. Maybe you can, maybe some, is somebody ready to share their life hack? And <laughs> their name. We're going to need some time to think on this one. Dad, you ready for a move? No, let me. Mushroom Carl. Get, uh, or is it Mushroom Carl? Let me get another 10 meters on it. Roger. Oh, I'm right under him now. All right, I think I've got mine. Awesome. Um, my name is Paul. I'm one of the ROV operators. And uh, so I'm the Pailaka Mukulu'u uh, Kia Owaya. Mm. And my life hack would be just going to the bathroom before bed. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't work for me. <laughs> Give it 20 years, Paul. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Paul. <laughs> I'm not sure that's as much of a hack as it is just <laughs> common sense. <laughs> as the best I could think of. <laughs> it's a good one after after Kotachi sharing his one. Yeah. Seems to be a bathroom life hack. Large Walteria glass sponge here. Kind of in on that guy, Jeff. Or a living waffle cone, as we've been calling them. This watch. That's what we're missing on this boat. Waffle cones. Still, sorry, still stuck on ice cream. <laughs> We usually have waffle cones too. It's a special treat once a month for ice cream. <laughs> on the ship on Sundays. And a lot they'll have like once during the cruise, maybe the final final ice cream one. No, like the wow. sea mounts are teasing us. That's a great shot. Winning shot here. Awesome. That's pretty. Very nice. Lots of associates with this guy, huh? Or are they called associates if they're on a sponge? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, time to continue up the hill, I think. Bridge, this is Nev. Ryan, could you talk a little bit more about basket stars, perhaps? Four zero meters. Yeah, so is there. Another type of filter feeding star, so they, they like to crawl up on top of a, a coral and get a good vantage point to pull the particles out of the water column as well. Um, they're a type of uh, ophiaroid or br brittle star, they're in that group. They're a brittle star, they're filter feeders. And so they're the largest uh, of the different families in the Ophiuroidae, or the brittle star group. They're the largest of its kind. Move zoom in just a little <laughs> bit on uh, Atlanta. It will stop that flickering. Maybe just past the corona there. I think I noticed it with the iris and some. Mm. Yeah, that's better. Yeah. 
I can also turn off some of these lights I'd now. I'd rather have them on so I can keep an eye on the tether. Yeah. Well, that's an auto, and it tends to not flicker Turn when it's an auto, but it does blow it out a little bit. Lots of interesting uh, shapes to these rock formations. And yeah. This is another one that looks like a, you know, a big boulder sticking out. It's kind of got the shape of like a dragon head or something. Dragon head boulder. Yeah, I can see that pretty well. There was a... Uh, issue with the two wraps on recovery, Paul, so keep it more of an eye on the tether because it's, if it was a D2, which it appears is to be. Is that another basket star? Or likely yeah, it awful. is. Yeah. Oh. Well, it looks like that crinoid is not was moving as much. I can really see that this is the side where the current hits it the most because there's more life here, giving yeah. it a place that where there's more Definitely. food for it to go there and catch. Whoa, look at that basket star. Yeah. The one we collected was more pink, whereas these brown ones might be different. Wait, that entire thing is one organism? I believe so. We'd have to take a closer look and see if we see more than one central disc. Wow, that's uh, a busy uh, sponge. Let's yeah, uh, tons of crinoids on there. Take a look. I think that's tetrapleural, if I'm remembering the name of that one right. A I sponge. Get it in the GSC on the way up there. With crinoids on it. And the crinoids are like all kinds sizes. There's like big ones and small ones, yeah? More than just crinoids, too. Stars. Yeah, can we zoom? Yeah, I'll get a little closer. Right? Yeah, those look like some hydroids just, uh, on the side of it. Pausing there to get a DSC Hydroids shot. and a squat lobster. And some brittle stars. Yeah, busy. Busy sponge. Can that push in a bit there? Can we see a coral growing on a sponge? We've seen it a few times on this expedition. Yeah, there was I one, so. like a big paragorget growing on one of the glass sponges okay. earlier and that was yeah. really interesting. This is an awesome little, little community right there. It is. and village here. Oh look, is that a little coral there? A little dead looking one? Go back up all the That the squat lobster is on? What is a squat the lobster? The hydroid. That's a hydroid, it's which... A uh, hydroid. Type of hydrozoan. Right. There's another white coral. Come on, Herc. Oh. Crinoids, squat lobster. Brittle stars. Brittle stars. Cool. Awesome. It's like the crinoid is waving at us. Hello, crinoid. Mm -hmm. I'm waving back at you. Oh, look, there's a, like a little shrimp there, too. Do you see it? It's yeah. kind of like in the center. I pointed to that one. was really small crinoids mixed in, too. The ones at the top are pretty small. Yeah. That's awesome. Look, there's a white crinoid on that other oh, yeah. coral. Dan, when you're in line with uh, Atalanta, is that safe Big or is it better to be in front? Um, we're kind of offsetting a little for the tether, so. 
but it depends on the current. Why do so many so corals live here? Seems to be all right. Keeping uh, Atlanta a little closer because the it's a favorable slope. Yeah, good amount of food within the their depth the range. Is, if it was steeper, I'd be more in front with Atlanta further away. We offset here. A lot of basket stars. Keeps it around that 20 meter range. So we get a good view of it. An enemy down there? Yeah. Are there uh, corals or fishes that produce their own light if, um, if we were to turn off the lights? Um. There are. There are a few examples of corals that have been shown to bioluminous. I think, I can't the gorgets, um, type of yellow octa coral we've seen a bunch of this expedition. And anglerfish? Anglerfish, certainly. Lots of different gelatinous organisms in the water column, bioluminous. Yeah, we have. There's quite a few organisms that do bioluminesce or glow. The only thing is that we wouldn't be able to see it. We need different kind of cameras to do to do, to do that. Okay. Do any do any corals or other animals um, like sea anemones and sea stars have a sim symbiotic relationship? Yeah, there are quite a few examples of that uh, in the deep sea. Um, especially, there are certain types of, of stars that are only found on certain types of corals. Um, there are certain types of worms that bore into certain types of corals and make their home in there. Um, and yeah, probably a, a ton more. We don't ton ton more relationships like that that we don't even know about yet. So. A lot of really tight associations with corals. They Ryan, what about um, shallow water corals? Do not do they have some sort of like photosynthesizing component that's symbiotic? They do, yeah. They have uh, algal symbionts called zooxanthellae, yeah. uh, whereas deep sea corals do not have those. Let's take a look. Yeah, there. Go ahead, Jeff. Babies. Anthomastids. Yeah. Probably coming from that one. Right. Chrysogorgia in the lower middle of the screen. That's great. It's Thank very you. Very crusted encrusted rocks here. Yeah, really bumpy. Are the corals on the bottom related to the species of on the reef or let's look at this one, please. Sure. They are related uh, a bit to there different to. degrees. Um, so some most of the corals we're seeing right now, or all of them actually are octocorals, so it's a group of uh, that is different than the scleractinians or reef building corals that make hard skeletons. But they uh, share a common ancestor. Share a bit more if you want. Maybe some 
two anthids on that rock. Gauges real quick. Roger. That's what these are? Yeah. Yeah, I believe so. We've seen them in that really linear pattern a few yeah. times. It's really interesting. Finding that little rim. All right, that's good on the zoom. Thanks. All right, take some out. really see like the sparse distribution of ev everything from this perspective. Hey Steve. Bridge, this is Dove. Do you mind if we put up the high pack? Four zero meters at uh, bearing west, please. Thank you. It's a nice large. Is that hemicro? No, paragorgia. Not sure. Push it in a bit if you want to. No. Try to get a little those. closer on the polyps. Yeah, go ahead. You can push all the way in there. Sorry, I was just being sticky this morning. Yeah. One might be a little close. You might have a to zoom out to focus. Yeah. That camera seems to be very happening. branchy. Yeah. Yeah. It, it uh, typically will focus on a d dust speck on the lens. So. Huh. Maybe. Not good on the zoom things. Do you have an idea of how old these rock formations are? Well, it's one of the things we're trying to determine when we. Um, collect all the rocks we're collecting and uh, we'll get some of them analyzed back in the lab and perhaps get some age dating. Roger. Um, quite old. Older Millions. than the dinosaurs? Well, probably around the same age. Uh. If we had to guess 80 to 100 million years old. But these, these rocks don't look the same as rocks we've seen on other seamounts and uh, this seamount is quite different in f shape and form and or in, in the crest of it anyway it's not a traditional flat topped guillot like we've been diving on it's more um, s sort of hummocky on, on the crest of it and uh, uh, with lots of sort of hills and valleys throughout the entire crest and summit area. So it's different. So it could have a different origin, it could have a different age. And that's one of the things we're trying to determine. Argonaut Seamount was sort of similar, but although much deeper than this one is. This one gets quite shallow, it comes up to, um, well, at least on this dive, 860 meters which will be about as shallow as we've been. Are these rocks well done, Dwight? Are they what? Are they considered cooked or well <laughs> yeah, done? Yeah, I would say so. 
Although I'd like to look for one at waypoint two, or I'm getting pretty close. Yeah, we're yeah. at like uh, I think 80 meters away. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, oh, 100. See, some of these don't look too too bad. We try to collect a rock sample about every 500 meters, um, either vertically or, or linearly along our transect, or whenever we see the the lithology or kind of the overall geology of the, the rock formations when they change if it changes dramatically we'll try to get another another sample what is lithology it's just basically the common rock type for an entire layer of a geologic formation so you get different lithologies along a volcano you'd get pillow lavas or you'd get um, emplaced dikes or um, brescia or tephra and these are sort of different facies or different lithologies associated with the seamount but this has all been kind of just this massive encrusted basalt as far as i can tell A lot of rubble down here. Thank you for sharing about the rocks and what we believe, what we, why we're here, really. Yeah, a lot of these rocks we're looking at look like they've, they're old pieces of ferromanganese crust that have broken off the rock surface and fallen down or transported down this sort of steep slope from up above. So I have a question for you, Dwight. Okay. I would imagine in a lot of ways, <laughs> uh, geology on land is much easier, right? You can take a lot of samples, you can get better pictures, the whole, whole view. Are there any ways yeah. that underwater geology is easier? Like are things <laughs> better preserved or less disturbed or? Boy, everything's really coated in this sort of ferromanganese crust, you know. Uh, certainly on the old rocks that have been emplaced for a while. So, I'm trying to think of a good example. Um, you know, when we're when we're diving along, um, like active volcanoes or active hydrothermal vent fields, you see um, much more fresh material. So it's not all encrusted, and that helps you ID things a little bit better. Um, there's there's areas where there's active tectonics and faulting, and so off California, for example, uh, associated with the San Andreas fault system, and you'd get um, you know some uplifted blocks of rock that used to be. Um, you know, that might be freshly exposed within the last, you know, say a couple hundred thousand years as opposed to millions of years. And that gives you a bit of a fresher look at the geologic structure. Um, on land, we you always try to kind of, um, one, one area that geologists like to study a lot are road cuts because, you know, they blasted away the cliff uh, in order to put a road in. Uh, or a side of a mountain or something, and uh, that gives you a nice fresh look into the interior. But most uh, land geologists will bring a rock hammer with them and, and crack the rock open as they go. Uh, they don't have to wait for an ROV to pick it up and bring <laughs> it on deck and cut it with a saw. Yeah. And so you can do a lot of, uh, you can be a little more efficient <laughs> or a lot more efficient on land. Yeah. I, uh I don't think it would quite work, but bringing Val's rock saw down with us <laughs> would be a lot of fun. Yeah. <laughs> and Dan is now thinking, how could we put the rock saw? <laughs> you know it. <laughs> <laughs> that would be a visibility disruptor, I think. <laughs> yeah, Val makes a point. You know, the ROV is kind of nice because we're just hovering here like a helicopter and on land we'd be scrambling up these hillsides and falling and <laughs> hurting ourselves on these talus slopes of loose rock yeah it's not that easy the rov can just kind of hover around here and get anywhere we need to go 
cool overhang here. Yeah, pretty dense community on here. Basket stars are enormous. Oh, and then there's swimming crinoid. Whoa. Oh. Swimming basket star. Yep. The crinoids are really active today. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What moon is it? It's the weekend. <laughs> <laughs> it looked like it was um, waning Yeah. Mm -hmm. last night. I could see the moon a little bit. So. Do either of you, are, are you pretty much exclusive with just underwater geology, or do you guys ping pong back and forth and compare and contrast what we see underwater versus what we've seen on land? Yeah, I think all geology, you know, marine geology is sort of a specialty for graduate studies more than undergraduate. So we're most, most marine geologists got undergraduate degrees in straight up geology. So we're always uh, kind of comparing what we see underwater to what we see on land. and. You can't even sit at a granite countertop without looking at that. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> wow, lots of crinoids right here. You don't see many granites underwater, that's oh. for sure. Why is that? They erode? Yeah, they're just asso they're associated with continental rock formations. And so... Um, you know, if we were doing these dives kind of closer to the continent, up, up on the shelf or whatever, you might see granites. Um, if we're studying areas like volcanic arcs, um, sort of around the Pacific Rim or in other areas, you would see sort of more felsic rocks, more continental associated rocks like uh, rhyolites and things that um, are similar to granites in some ways. But most of the ocean is made up of basaltic rock, mafic rock, um, these dark colored rocks. They're more dense. They float on the lithosphere at a uh, deeper level. The uh, granitic rocks are um, not as dense and they kind of rise up on the lithosphere and that's what makes them a continent. Beautiful Christ of Orgid here. Bridge this is Nev. Push it on that graph you want, Jeff. It's got a nice squatty on him there. Four zero meters west, please. Okay. What was the name of this coral? That is a Chrysogorgid. Chrysogorgid. What are you saying? Come on, ROV. I'll take you on. When you guys come across shipwrecks, how much of the time is it like purposeful and, and how much of the time is it an accident? Well, in my experience, we've we've stumbled across some, some shipwrecks that were unexpected, but much less frequently than when we're targeting a shipwreck to dive on or explore. I guess it depends on how it was, if it was discovered previously or not. Um, sometimes we plan entire expeditions or entire dives just around exploring one shipwreck. Okay. Mm. And other times um, we'll just be driving along like this and see one. That's pretty rare, though. I'm going to stop him up there, Katachi. Another interesting rock face. Yeah, this on. whole boulder Hope is covered. 
large boulder. Rich, this is Nav. Please hold position. Almost at waypoint two. Nice. Yeah, seeing a lot of that sort of white corralid off to the right. That's what we're thinking it is. Can we zoom on the white coral on the right side? Sure. Thank Go you. Ahead, Jeff. Push in there. Yeah, question about looking at different types of rocks underwater. Um, Certainly in the areas that we're studying in the middle of the Pacific Ocean, the seamounts are, uh, are all uh, hotspot volcanic origin, so we think, or, uh, or formed at mid-ocean ridges. And so that's um, almost entirely mafic rock material, uh, basaltic Push rocks, a bit more if you want. Um, not the rhyolitic or more siliceous um, rocks that you would see closer to a continent. So, but a lot of uh, explorers and ROV systems do dives in areas where there's um, island arc volcanism closer to continents, and that would exhibit a different type of rock, but not here in the middle of the deep Pacific Ocean. That's interesting. I thought of it that way. Thank you for that. Thanks for the zoom. Looks good. Had a request to zoom in on a sun star. Yeah, I'm not, not, not sure where it is. Quite seeing it. I think it's a little bit more to the right. Oh, there. oh yeah. Yeah. You can see it in wow. Atlanta's camera view. That's oh, yeah. kind of how I spotted it. What's this called again? Sun, sun star. Sun star. Yeah. Push in uh, halfway if you want. Let's get the lasers on it. Yeah, that's a big one. Cool. It's the first I've seen. Put Sunny down in the lab to shame. <laughs> Another swimming crinoid. Yeah, wow. it's large. Wow. For those of you wondering, the distance between the two lasers is 10 centimeters. Look at that. 10 arms. Huge, yeah. Push it just a bit, boys. About half a meter in diameter, pretty much. If I was into tattoos, I would tattoo this onto my body. <laughs> but I'm not that into tattoos. Maybe just a painting on my wall is plenty. Look at that. You, I, they eat coral also? They are probably predators of some sort. Just anything. <laughs> yeah. Let's sit back out of it. Yeah. Better. Beautiful. Okay. Yep, looks good, thanks. Yeah, 
yet to not be even. Lots of that purple Victigorgia on this rock. Some bubblegum corals as well. So I think we're just getting up on top of this little plateau where Waypoint 2 is. Um, still some... Can we zoom on this area of the rock with all the pink on it? Yeah, Raj. Just come oh, out yeah. here for a DSC as soon as it clicks. Right there. Pretty picture. Yeah. Wow. Nice. Push it halfway there if you want to. Really nice diversity on this rock. These look like all little so, uh, anthomastids. Sponge? Where are they? Sea star. Oh, it is. It's all kind of curled up. I wonder if it's curled up on top of something and it's just devouring it as we speak. <laughs> nom, 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 nom. Yeah, these look like anthomastid recruits. Probably. Anthomastid recruits. That's very cool. I think we Interesting. Do. Figure out what's going on with that star. It's so weird. Yeah. Yeah, it must what's be over the doing? top of something. Looks like there's a dead. Is that a dead coral just to the left yeah, of it? Yeah, bent over. <laughs> Maybe. Oh yeah. It got too heavy. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> oh, something popping out there. Just be eating one of these anthomastids. Yeah. So. Certainly enough of them. It's funny seeing it bunched up like that. Yeah. Mm -mm. Cool. Let's check out other things on this giant rock. Okay. The max depth that Hercules can go is 4,000 meters and. Um, the max depth that it's another Atalanta uh, can go star is star up there. Six thousand mm -hmm. meters, is that correct? Yep. And what, what is, is the length of our line that connects the? There's uh, seventy-three hundred meters on there at the moment. Awesome. Seventy-three hundred. What's the uh, line. what's the glossy brochure say about Hercules' uh, weight? at the moment. Mm. I believe 5,000 pounds. 4,500 maybe? Is that accurate, you think? Yeah. I just wondered if they up we weighed it uh, in San Pedro last year. If they Is updated the exact weight. Is that like the top of a dead sponge? I have to look at my tally book to see what that yeah. number is. Can't right, remember. that one? Yeah, can we look at yeah. the sponge? Sure. Push in there a bit, Jeff. Something interesting going on there. One cup coral off to the left. Huh. First one of the night. Or the morning, whatever it is. Okay, I should. Alrighty. Okay, thank you to one of our viewers. Um, Victor Gorgia is named for the 
1998 cruise on which it was discovered, RV La Talasa, Victor Cruise to Josephine Bank, which is off of Spain with RV Victor 6000. Thank you. Lydia, nice. Uh -huh. Thanks for that. Oh, Get a zoom good. on this worm here. Yeah, go ahead, Jeff. I haven't seen many annelids. Interesting. A bunch of recruits. Mm -hmm. Yeah. A lot of diversity here, all sorts of different animals. Do we want to take an eDNA? Is that a thing? It is a thing. Not a bad idea. I know they were rationing their uh, water samples due to limited number of filters, but... Um, yeah. Yeah, we can get a couple of dives, though. Or we should be able to. Yeah. We have about 13 filters left. What, uh, what micron are the filters? Just out of curiosity. What was that? What micron are the filters? Like how, how fine is the filtering of the water? I'm not sure, honestly. Uh, so like a standard eDNA filter? I already offered Beth your uh, AeroPress filters, <laughs> so. Oh, I was rationing AeroPress filters, too. <laughs> Maybe let's go to the top of the boulder and look at that um, sea star, and uh, we'll grab an eDNA there. I do have an emergency. Quite a few of those worms on this rock, actually. This rock is just teeming. Life. Yeah, it is. Really diverse. Crikey, mate. This rock here is just teeming with life. You have sponges, <laughs> you have corals, you have sea stars of all kinds. <laughs> Push in there if you want to. Push in a bit more. Get up on the fly. On the Looks like that one's kind of pumped up a bit too, like it's eating something. Yeah. Yeah, probably crawling around eating these corals that are carpeting the rock. Let's see, we've got room to come around here without. I wonder if that bigger rope. sea star fell from the rock and was just eating on the rock, and this rock has just got so much life, it just keeps on growing. He starts probably either to the aft camera there. Hippoplasoma or hypostere. Oh, yep. It's it's quite tight. a few of those. Or it can come down there. It's like Push in a little if you want there, to The uh, black background. Almost dramatic. Yeah, that's really pretty. Beautiful shots. Yeah, nice. Beautiful. Look at that, with the contrast with the dark. I love it. And there's so many colors. Yes. Gorgeous photography. Wow, that's awesome. Wow. It's just beautiful, mate. Can we do a uh, Niskin here? Yeah. Um, we're we fine out? on the Niskin whenever we are good on the shot here. It's a gorgeous shot. Really is. That's a cover photo for the next oceanography supplement. That's D E N N E R. <laughs> 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 Director of photography. 
Uh, I do have a weird bug though here on Atalanta. Um, just trying to get it in the DSC there. Let's see if it'll click. Thirty-second interval meters. Painful. All right, went. Change that. We never fill the cards, do we? What's that? We never fill the cards on that thing, do we? Should change no. it to fifteen seconds. It. It. Yeah. It uploads. Uh, oh, is it coming up with fiber? Yeah. Oh. Real time. Watch your bug there. Watch your major malfunction there. Uh, I think it just stopped, but the auto heading and then bump in the degrees was not changing. It's um, uh, yeah, that uh, gooey has been. Had to like just fiddle around, here for a minute. manually changing it. Seemed to do it. It's this purple one over here, do you know? Oh, yeah. It's Victor Gorgia. That's Victor Gorgia, yeah. Back down up here. So much photos. I feel sorry for whoever's going to work on these. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be me, so I feel sorry. A lot to back up. <laughs> <laughs> Describe everyone, count every animal. That's intense. That's kind of like the whole shooting match, isn't it? Got a little bit of everything. All right, yeah. I can do the uh, Niskin anytime we want. But ready for Niskin? Yeah. Is this our first Niskin of the dive? Yes. Oh, yeah. The Niskin's right over the rock, right? All right, got it. Which one, number one? Number yes. one. Mm Nice. Let's uh, let's let's keep going to waypoint two. We and done around here. I was holding off on a ship move just to yeah, explore the area. Let me get untangled here. Down what were those uh, pink way. corals called again, Ryan? Those little ones. Anthemastis. Anthemastis. Mushroom coral.
There is a question as to whether fish live down here. I believe fish do live down here. They just they don't they do come on the camera every now and then. I wouldn't say it's like a really rare occurrence on on our shifts at least. I feel like we see lots of fish. But that get, that's relative. Yeah, they're pretty s sparse. I think uh, we usually see a, a few every watch, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. All deep sea variety of fishes. Yes. Including our favorite chonacops. <laughs> <laughs> that other one we saw yesterday, uh, a couple of days ago, with the really bright blue, almost glowing scales. With mm -hmm. a really black face and fins. I have to go look at the picture. That was really pretty. I like the one with the weird head. Yeah, that big, yeah, that big giant one. Yeah, that okay, was very kick cool. Kick him in the gear. Bridge, this oh, is Oh yeah, the one that was like diving into the rocks. Four zero meters west, please. Just a bit there, if you want. And we're still looking for rocks for Val, yeah? Well, we haven't really started yet. We can start now. Mm. Okay. Looking for them angular rocks. You got the porch lights on. Porch yeah, lights sorry. On. Thank you. There we go. I feel like these look like rocks that you would see at a river down by the river end. <laughs> what was the last ship, ship move, Katachi? Uh, 40 meters west. Okay, That's what thanks. what I said. I'll wait for another sonar scan here, but yeah, I guess there is still some higher areas to your left. Yeah, there is to the south. That's where we were. You can uh, see the down screen where we're poking around here. Looks like the west. That's, that's where we were before. Yeah, yeah. The west is going to jump off the cliff here, it looks like. We come down a bit there, Paul. It's yeah. going downhill. Unless you want to go south. But this is, uh no, that's okay. Let's um, let's look for a, a rock to pick up here, All right. and then we can move towards the uh, next slope, next waypoint. Some uh, rocks there in the crack. Maybe. Yeah, uh, that'd be hard to reach. Um, there's uh, something right there at the top that'll maybe come that out. That might be loose, yeah. I don't know. Yeah. We can try. It'd be great to dislodge something. Uh, that one right there to the right of the core. Let me spin around. Yeah, that's interesting, it. isn't it? There's one. That could be quite large, though. Yeah, uh, one there might be dislodged. Uh, there's more up here on the top. Let's see how it looks from this angle. Let's see if we can get that rock out of there, Paul. Yeah, 
put your jaw under it, hook it, lift it. Oh yeah. Wow. That's perfect. Nice. That is a big boy though. Nice dislodgement, if that's a word. Thank you. <laughs> I think it's too big though. So I think so. Sorry to say. Do you think so? It'll fit in the box. Will it fit in the box? All right. Will it fit in the jaws? Will it, will it fit in the rock saw? Might have to roll it over a little bit and grab the top. There you go. Yeah, beautiful. Nice. That'll fit in one of the starboard bios? Absolutely. All right. Can we get a uh, little bit of a zoom here? Perfect, thank you. And then some added extra bonus. We have a couple of sea stars and... Bonus brill stars. Yeah. Some polyps on there, maybe? It should fit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I guess we'll see. Awesome. Okay, we're good on the zoom. Okay, see if it'll go. Put it in there at the right angle, it should go. And just like that, Dan has shifted responsibility. Yeah. <laughs> Your turn now. <laughs> zoom in there if you want to. So it wants something. Oh. Are both empty? Yes. Yeah, go for E. You'll have a more of a. You can see in there which way it needs to go. <laughs> something like that, I think. Did you want some? No, thanks. Looks like another little tiny <laughs> sort of rhinoid back there. <laughs> Is it waving at us? <laughs> Hello. Drop, drop Just one in. a bit too one big. Side in first, it should go. Or is that like a star of some sort? Sorry, I didn't hear your question. Um, is that a? It might not be anything. It just not might standing be. standing up though, kind of better. Like a oh yeah, it looks like a little bit of just leaf in the wind. Yeah, flocculent waving around. There's a brittle star below that, though. Oh, God. And you can see those um, polyps. They're kind of, like, closed in compared to all those other friends that are, like, opened. Mm-hmm. Yeah, roll back to your left just a little. Yeah, drop it in there, see if it'll go. Just release it? Sure. Well, I'll stick it down in a little more so it doesn't fall so far. Rotate left just a little. Let her go, see what happens. Like that? Yeah. Nice. Hey. Oh, nice. Perfect fit. Ta -da. Great job. Good luck, Val. <laughs> <laughs> she's she's down in the lounge cursing us right now. <laughs> the rock saw will be operating from 10 a.m. to 10 p.m. tonight <laughs> yeah. as we try and cut open this rock. Two rock mode collections for geologists. A whole bunch of little ones or one big one. <laughs> At least what I've seen over the years. Okay, where were we headed? We were headed right. west. Yeah, let's. Um, I'll I don't think I don't care so much about getting to waypoint two. It's it doesn't look that interesting. So I'd rather head towards the steeper contours towards waypoint three from here. Copy that. Right. I'll just let uh, Dan get ahead of Atalanta. And yeah. Oh. follow our nose here for a minute and see where we go. I've got to say, swapping between the uh, camera views here for samples is a lot easier. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Look at that really big. Then firing the salvo. Well, yeah, the that little bottom. Yeah, because I know the Savo can be jarring. Pretty good. 
The salvos were set up for uh, oh, look, and it looks sitting like there's over another there. Sun star yeah. there. Right. So just having it right well, maybe in front it's another is nice. Yeah, I think it was like a flattened out Brzingid. That's why we gave you power of control. <laughs> Actually, it's because we're tired of pushing the buttons for you. Yep. <laughs> what do you want to see? Pick it out yourself. Well, and every pilot is going to have yeah. their own slight preferences, so. Oh, yeah. <laughs> As noted by Dan and I making separate requests for that every Yeah. Dive. Well, so I, I give you the top left and I give Dan the bottom right. So you yeah. can see the, the still camera and you can see the outside. Hercules I like, is I like looking at the high at pack while I'm over there. 448 meters. Which way do I need to go? Atlanta is currently at... 1,431 meters. And the Nautilus is at this the way. surface of the water. Can you uh, bring your head to 135 for a minute? Do scientists ever get FOMO when they're not on watch? Most definitely. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in the lounge watching the, uh, a lot of, lot the, of the time. Yes. What's that? Was that for me? Uh, yeah, let's do, uh, yeah, their main 20 meters is south, so what happens. South? Like, Val, yeah. she likes to watch Bridge, this the is enough. I think we'll go south, and then we'll cut over it. Uh, 20 meters south, please. Just trying to go uphill with the sonar here. This is the way we need to go at the moment. Free out, Ratchet, right, thanks. Yeah, no, you're good. I can. Very interesting, bright colored rock there. Yeah. Or not interesting. Could we take a look at these white corals off to the right? Sure. I would want to say they're primnoids. I think so too. Go ahead. Primnoid. Zoom in there a bit. <laughs> <laughs> the ROV seems to be just a little bit heavier than it was a few minutes ago. Got a uh, 280 kilo um, ground fault on craft. Should I yeah. turn it off or um, just leave it? We'll uh, exercise at shoulder here. Now. When I come up, when we're uh, traversing up, we'll have you uh, run the shoulder all the way out like I was doing on the way down the other day. Yeah. Is close enough there, Ryan, or you want Yeah, that looks great, thanks. I think these are probably Norella, the genus Norella. Nice. I feel like if there were to be a, like, a dominant creature that I'm noticing throughout this dive, it's definitely sea stars uh, and like prim uh, yeah. crinoids. More for them to eat at this depth, too, because of that Going diversity and density now. of corals is quite a bit higher. Mm. Okay, why don't you uh, bring the bubble cam over to five and uh, run that thing all the way down. I'm sure I should be high enough now. Just run the shoulder all the way down and back. down. Raj. Between waypoint two and three is pretty much the the uh, is that it? Uh, least yeah. amount of slope on this the entire dive and after uh, waypoint four boy it gets super steep Rapidly. all the way up to the summit. That's about it. Should be pretty you know, dramatic. Do that like two or three times dive. rapidly. viewing Atlanta to exercising our shoulder. One more time. When we look at water samples, do we also look at the amount of lead in water? Lead. Lead. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm not sure if it's one of the... Okay. Park it elements that's happens. sampled or uh, detected. 
You can uh, use certain isotopes of lead to date coral, I believe. Um, mostly the water samples are just filtered and then Actually analyzed for eDNA. Oh yeah, 2.7 but, but max. Beth takes, does do geochemistry analyses nice. on, her, on the water samples she's collecting. I'm not sure if that's one of the elements that's uh, studied or not. Okay, put bubble back to one for me. Raj. These Brazingids are really large, I think, bigger than some of the ones we were seeing on other dives. Probably about 30 centimeters arm to arm. Push in there if you want. a couple arms in a fight. Yeah, you can see there's no fine point on them, so they've definitely been nipped. Do they, uh, do they battle, or does something... I think something just comes along and Nips takes it. a piece, yeah. yeah. Okay. This is a breezing get start? Yes. Ah, uh, just trying to get a shot of the under the arm there. But little mushroom growing on it. Be nice to, if we could get to waypoint three on our watch. Um, so I love looking at all this stuff, but let, let's try to get keep the it. ship moving Got while it. we are, and if we could stay ahead of Argus or Atalanta, you know, Got have time for our zooms. I'm just concerned that we're. You want me to call in another move? No, stand by. Going the wrong way here. Gotcha. What is the maximum weight of rock? samples that can be carried on on Hercules hmm. one more rock like the one we just got so we have two big boxes and then uh, are you talking about weight or uh, weight yes please there is a published um, payload capability in the uh, glossy brochure is off the top of my head. We can, um, there's quite a bit of ballast on Herc though, so we carry some really heavy things down on, especially on the engineering dives for ONC, but we have to, uh, requires quite a dance of us um, removing quite a bit of ballast on the vehicle for whatever the heavy stuff is. So at the moment there's, um, 36, uh, I think they're four pound uh, lead ballast blocks and three um, eight or nine pound, whatever that works out to. So we could in theory take all those off and put uh, stuff to deploy. Let's do that. Yeah, whatever the move is directly. Yeah, it might three. be kind of flat and uh, not quite as biologically interesting or geologically interesting for the yeah, next uh, for the next little stretch here. So if we can book across this, that would be good. Yeah. Do a forty meter move here. Okay, Paul, I'm gonna head uh, two two five ish. Copy that. Here, I'll speed it up just a little. You can 
bring a speed up to point three two while we're going across the flat here. Looks like a bamboo stock and a uh, dead yeah, Okay, you got it. George misses nothing. No, he doesn't. Doesn't miss. All right, so let's I heard he had sugar this morning, though. <laughs> <laughs> Here at Accordia here. George told me what his favorite candy bar was. Setting up the beautiful shot down the axis. <laughs> 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 That wasn't on SPL, whatever it was. No, it was not. <laughs> okay, can go a little tighter. <laughs> okay, just a quick spiral zoom there. Didn't quite get it, but it's all right. Okay, instead of sharing a life hack, why don't we share something that makes our life a little bit easier? <laughs> like, uh, whenever I come to, so my name is Malanai. I am the Science Communication Fellow in Hawaiian. My, I am a Kumu, um, I am a Mea Haimo'olelo and Kumu Ike. And something that I do to make my life a little bit easier, especially on this vessel, is whenever I come to the van or to the control room or come on to watch, I bring my backpack full of clothes, like extra jackets and socks <laughs> and, and um, a beanie because I usually enter the van with a warm body. And as, I, as the time passes by, I get colder and a little bit colder and I just put on more jackets and I'm all better and that is something that's Push like there a, that guy a, little Jeff. a life hack for me. Okay. What is something that makes your life a little bit easier? Go ahead, Ryan. Hi everyone. My name is Ryan Gasparo. I'm a PhD student at Temple University um, and um, on the science team on this expedition, helping look at the biology. Um, in Hawaiian, my role is the Akeakamai on this watch, um, or scientist. And something that makes my life easier. I would have to say, especially when we have these, we have late night watches that espresso coffee bean, esp chocolate covered espresso beans have really made my life easier. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Dwight, have you introduced yourself yet this no, much? No, I have not. I'm Dwight Coleman. I'm from the University of Rhode okay. Island, the Ocean State, and I'm the expedition leader uh, and a marine geologist on this and the watch leader for this watch. And I have not memorized my Hawaiian title yet, sadly. He is the Alaka'i and a Kanaka Akeakamai. I'm going to work on that. Life hack, hmm, or something that makes my life easier. I was thinking about this earlier. Um, 
I have sort of a pet peeve about waiting in long lines. Mm. So whether I'm at the grocery store, or checkout line, or uh, TSA, you know, security scan line, I'm always jockeying for position and lingering in a weird way so I can move in <laughs> to a better <laughs> position. And so I've found to be very good at it. Mm. And I pay attention to like the clerk or the TSA agent and the one that's the more efficient of the group. Mm -hmm. And I'm always like trying to get into that line. And, you know, I, I uh, kind of uh, spend a lot of time thinking about it because I don't like waiting in lines. <laughs> that makes a lot of sense as to when you go Should to grab your up. food now. Yep. Awesome. Yeah. Oh, sea cucumber. What is the Hawaiian word, kotachi? Loli. Yeah, you. Beat me to it. Beat me to it. <laughs> Good job. Dwight, do you have that special TSA thing? Great, thank you. <laughs> I do have TSA pre, but yeah, even, yeah. even that is like a <laughs> uh, an annoying, gotten to be in an annoying line lately. And you have to pay to stand in that line, which is really annoying. <laughs> yeah. And now if you have a Twit card. Yeah, if you have a Twit card. Twit card functions as TSA pre as well. Oh, oh does it? Oh man. Yep. What lower does? on the back side of your Twit card. Twit card. The lower left number. If you punch that into a, it's not the. It's the known traveler number. I think. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I did not uh, know that. That will that will get you a TSA pre. Good to know. It means you went through a background check. Yeah. I tried to do that one time. You gave up. They didn't money. allow me to, so I kind of like yeah. wasted it, a lot of money. Oh man. Yeah. I refused to get one. It's uh. It's weird. At, at least with the airline that I use, it has to go in the redress number, not the known traveler number. Mm. And then it kicks it in and I get TSA pre. That's our box again. You're going to have to change your box. Yeah, yeah I, I kind of obsess with that. I always like triple check that my known traveler number, or the redress number is in there. And yeah. Like I'm just, and when I, I, I make sure when I check my bags that it's in there. <laughs> if, if I had my old job, I would get clear again. Just because that's like, yep, I, I cut in front of everybody. Uh, for those of you wondering, when we say Hawaiian roll, we just say it's the Hawaiian word. So it's just their their regular position just translated into Hawaiian language. Right. Not the yeah. Yeah. Not a not a title that's yeah. <laughs> it's the translation. Good question. Okay. Um Fiona. Mm, After one. she's busy typing away over there. Okay. Uh, hi, everybody. I'm Fiona. I'm from the CNMI, and I'm currently a student at the University of Guam studying biology. And my life hack, or what was the other one? Something that makes your life easier. Something that makes my life easier, especially on this expedition, is definitely carrying this pillow around. Is the screen showing? Oh, it's not showing, but I would show you. Um, yeah, I carry this pillow around um, as somewhat of a comfort type thing. Uh, reminds me of home, so you know, if you ever plan on traveling, maybe bring a small pillow or a blanket that reminds you of home, because it definitely it definitely helps you sleep better. Show us um, your pillow. Get this camera over here. Mm -hmm. Where is it? This one over here, somewhere. Push in there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it reminds me of home. Um, yeah, and it helps me with my back as well. So, bring a pillow. Nice zoom. Oh, I just yes. really want to see it lined up in the middle. Yeah, so I'm trying to do failing. It, it's bending over a bit in the breeze there. Moving target. Okay. That's a good shot, too. Mm -hmm. Thank you for sharing, Fiona. You are a haumana and hu'ea'o who is training to be a kanaka, kanaka epikema slash akiaka mai. 
Bridge, this is Nav. Another four zero meters bearing 225, please. Okay. Um, would Jeff and or Dan like to share next? Yeah, I'm sure I'm Dan. I'm sitting in the hurt chair at the moment. Uh, one of my life hacks on this boat is I have a piece of 22 gauge wire with a knot tied in each end of it and I hook it to the springs on Ryan's mattress and hang my iPad from it so I have a floating display to <laughs> my book at night. <laughs> Amazing. Thank you for sharing, Dan. You are a uh, Pailaka Mokuluukia Awaya. Awesome. And uh, luckily, they've now put um, three quarter inch plywood below all the bunks. So it used to be more like a hammock <laughs> for the upper bunk and the lower bunk. But now it's more like uh, sleeping on a piece of three quarter inch plywood <laughs> at the mattress. At the mattress top. on the top of it. <laughs> the last one mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. craft ground fault is back yes yeah i see that i'm jeff video guy i have not memorized my hawaiian title um i i think this is distilled down to boat life hack <laughs> as opposed to just life hack in general or what's made my electricity makes my life easier but <laughs> the internet yeah, makes my life easier do Running a quick, water. quick zoom in there, Jeff. Yeah, go ahead. Oh, yeah. Urchin down there. I was, yeah, I thought we were in manganese nodule land, but... Could be a good place to scoop. Yeah, they're kind of little. If people are interested in nodule material. Uh, we do have the scoop. Um, always an interest. I don't know if they're attached or not. Um, let me get out ahead a little bit more. Okay. So. Jeff, what's your life hack? Oh, well, let's do boat hack. Um, I had a couple of them. One, I always have a a pair of earbuds or earplugs because depending upon your watch things can get loud mm. and sometimes it's nice just to have relaxing music to try and fall asleep to or read to or whatever mm -hmm. awesome thank you for sharing jeff you are the kanaka paibikio get the manip out and just do a quick scratch yeah don't don't bury it but just uh, so i should do it other people in the van do and actually write that down and put it in front of me. Oh, I can work on that for okay. us. I can get us. I a won't say who does that. <laughs> I know who it is, nope. and I won't say it too. Huh? <laughs> yeah. Okay. They they are soft. Yeah, I'll say. We got a really good scoop here. We could. Yeah, let's do it. I want to stop him up there. It's quite at a, an extensive field here because it's uh, stop the boat, please. At the slat area, Bridge. This is Nav. Please hold position. I know who sent this message. Okay, grab it up. Where's the uh, handle for this guy? It's down where you can't see it. That's convenient. Just grab it by the end, by the on the PVC there, break it away, and then you can. There you go. You can tip it over if you want to get the. May or may not be able to see it here. Just a blind grab for the hockey puck. 
You can tip it over one more time if you want. You're gonna want to have it the other way to yeah. scoop. Yeah, I'm just getting it out. Scoop, bad grab, hard scoop. <laughs> okay, my favorite Carl that I've seen on this expedition thus far would have to be uh, Eridigorgia and uh, Victigorgia. Eridigorgia is the spiraling Carl, and the oh. Victigorgia is the purple Carl. See it bubble there. Oh, Thank yeah. you for the question. I think that came from my tutu. Hi tutu. So, oh yeah, the DBLs because we're in the mud. It's too low to. It's too low to get a. Uh, we have a comment. Have we seen any pinnipeds this expedition? So, no seals thus far. Maybe so as we're coming back into right. port. Well, Actually, that'll work nicely. Nodule improvised with a nodule net. <laughs> you gotta kind of bury it before you scoop. To otherwise, well, you might have got a good scoop there. These are yeah, tinier uh, nodules, looks yeah. like. They're all on the surface too, so that was perfect. Nice. Look at the bubble view. You're getting the mother load there. <laughs> Don't need no handle. <laughs> <laughs> it's probably easier. Th it's probably better this way. Totally. <laughs> Paul also wants to say, hey, I meant to do that. <laughs> Well, I was just not having good luck with the handle. And <laughs> That's perfect. <laughs> Do I want one more? Yeah, yeah. sure. Might as well. Nodules for track. everyone. That was a nice scoop. Good job. Some legit uh, scoop technique going on there. You wouldn't know it, but this is my first scoop. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you would know it from the handle. <laughs> Wait, no, it's a silly handle. I had serious grief with it. Who did the one yesterday? Do you ha did do we make a hole in the bag? No, no. It's no. pretty tough uh, laundry bag. Oh yeah. Got some treasures in there. Go for one more, and there yeah, are a couple yeah. of little larger, larger yeah. ones. I uh, can uh, scoot up into some fresh yeah. Uh, yeah, let's territory do if you want. Even if you just uh, swivel left, kind of. Grab it. Yeah, this look a little bigger.
up again if you want. Come to your right a little. Let's see on. To your right a little bit more. Just so that. Yeah. Just everywhere. showing off. Looks good to me. Yeah. I think you got plenty. Did you guys see you do like basically a full twist stand? Uh, I let it shake out a bit so you have some viz when you're going in the box. And then yeah, I do a twist. Uh, easier to get it in the box. Just make sure that twists so you <laughs> it's not on your jaws. Nice little package. You're kind of right about the jaws. I guess that's the disadvantage with this. No, if you twist right, it won't be on your jaws. Like this? You know, whatever you got to do to make it not tangle in the jaws. But yeah, something like that. Yeah, I think this needs to go into uh, the outer starboard aft, whatever, B? Is that B? Yeah, aft, same, sorry. same one as last time, yeah. F. Where's the other one? F, I think. So the tool we're using right now is called the scoop, right? And yeah, we've called it the ring net or the nodule bag or different things. It doesn't have an official name. Zoom in there, Jeff. And we're just it is a scoop, though. We're using it to collect nodules right now. Go up wide just a little bit. Mm, yeah, perfect. Pretty coral. Mm -hmm. Little bubblegum coral hanging out. A little bit wider. All right. Touchdown. Great Zip. success. Nice. What sample number are we up to? Uh, we are now on 52. One, 152? Yeah. 152. Wow. <laughs> I always wanted a rock with a coral on it. The one we grabbed was just 151, right? Yes. Okay. Maybe Beth wants a coral rock. <laughs> Look at all the microbes growing on that rock. <laughs> <laughs> no takers? Well, I like it, but I don't think so. You don't need it. No, no, Dan was wondering, can we just take it home? Oh, <laughs> <the coffee table. laughs> if we like an uh, underwater bonsai tree. A pet rock. A pet yeah. rock with a, with a coral. Coral if bonsai. In the monument, Dan, I'd grab it for you right now. <laughs> we don't Put need that a in my check here. bag home. Do, do we need so. a miskin here? No, yeah. I don't know. No. Bridge, this no, is not. All right, where are we? Shape, we're no, more than halfway no. through our watch, so uh, yeah. 20 meters on the wrong side. Let me Sorry, George, I jumped the gun. Uh, pull position for now. I gotta, I gotta get down here. I got 40 meters to go for it. And I really need to turn the other way for tether management purposes. Hurt 
was here. Well, her footprint there. Do any of you guys have oh, look, um, another one? A favorite ocean fiction movie, book, or audio drama, or some sort of favorite ocean fiction action? Do a quick uh, flyby zoom there if you want oh. to. Of course. <laughs> Jaws is my old time favorite, the original Jaws. Steven Spielberg's first movie as director. No, actually that was Duel, but no, that was Ron Howard. Are you talking about, what was it, ocean movies? Ocean fiction, any any type. Oh, Life Aquatica. Oh, that's a great one. Yeah. <laughs> Bill Murray. Yeah, that's a good one, for sure. Cannery Row by John Steinbeck, great book. Not sure they made a movie out of that one. No movie, but mm -hmm. fiction still. Yeah. Come up. I'm gonna yeah, that's a great read, read, actually. I read it not yeah. too long ago, for the second time. The yeah, I did too. The it original was, uh, Disney, 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea. Disney 20,000. I've never seen that actually. Oh, I read the book. What is it, Max von Sydow? Or uh, I can't remember who plays Nemo and then uh, Kirk Douglas. Campy is all get out, but when you're six years old, it was like, whoa, this is really cool. Okay, I'm breaking the speed limit here, but uh, they can't catch you. Wow. Yeah, it's just miserable for the uh, kids. That have How about to watch the Poseidon it Adventure? <laughs> yeah, another good one. Hopefully, there's not too much life for them to have to count here, anyways. So. Well, they probably like to have to count manganese nodules per square meter or something. Oh like God! That. <laughs> Unless you want to do a. Uh, Why is it going so fast? That was quite the nodule field. It's pretty cool. And is this a bunch of dead? through here? It looks like it to me. Yeah, looks okay. like sponge debris. Back on the hill again. Can we zoom on this coral quickly? Just sure. Partial? Yeah, go ahead, Jeff. What's going to be our direction here? Is the 225? Yeah, 225. Yeah, oh, 225, sorry. Oh, right. oh, no. The other west. You're trying to see if I'm paying attention. Yeah. <laughs> Some snake stars on this coral. Bad angle there. <laughs> oh, it's so good. I can see the polyps. Thanks. You good? Yep. Okay. There we go. Up we the hill. Go to good. Is that yep. a good to go. Plexar at Asako. Bridge, this is enough. Thoughts on the movie, um, yeah. The Abyss? Four zero meters at 225. Thank you. Yeah, I like The Abyss. That's a great movie. James Cameron, I think. Yeah. Oh, first fish? Or first big fish. Oh, yeah. Mm. It's mm -hmm. one of those uh, sneezy needles with a whole bunch of stuff growing. Can zoom in a bit there, Jeff. Don't look like stuff growing on it. Sorry, no, I'm not. I'm just horribly mistaken. Do we know that? Is that a holosaur? No. Grenadier, isn't it? Gr yep. Grenadier, yeah. Sounds much better on the menu than rat tail. <laughs> <laughs> Still never seen one eat. Maybe that's why they're so skinny. <laughs> yeah, not a lot of meat on those bones. No. Could we put like a chum dispenser on Hercules to see if we could get it to eat? A lot of like shallower water, the fish should be tearing it up in the light. Bugs around the light, the fish come in like that. Did you mention we might get a uh, shallow dive, Dwight? 
Yeah, I haven't looked at um, the summit of King George. I think it's more shallow than this. It might be 600. And uh, when they mapped it last year, they uh, were running the okay. uh, water column. Well, we always run the water column uh, mapping feature on the multi-beam echo sounder. And they, it looked like there were some schools of fish. Cool. Um, we're coming up to 860 on this dive, so it'll be interesting to see if there might be something up there. Oh, yeah. That's pretty shallow by our standards. Yeah. Ridigorgia. They have a common name, Ridigorgia. Firework, maybe? I don't think they do. Spiral I mean, coral, firework coral is what I I've been hearing a lot lately. It Fire, makes me think firecracker. Of like DNA or something. Yeah, I like that staircase or something. Yeah, starburst or what's the what's the one? The firecracker does that? Are they uh, fireworks? Can't remember. I've got a comment about your deltaometer here, Dan. It uh, it's only red right at 19 or 20. Then it goes back to white. Hmm. Really? Yeah. So it doesn't stay red. Goes white after. Oh, I need one more field in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll have to. Uh, Entertain myself later with Grafana. Greetings from New Zealand. Any future mapping to be done down here in New Zealand? Kia ora, right? Kia ora, hi. I don't know, Dwight, are there plans to come back to this region and do more mapping or diving? You mean after this expedition? Yes. Uh, there's definitely more mapping being planned uh, for Papahanaumokuakea, but closer to the uh, main Hawaiian Islands, sort of on the, I guess the uh, eastern eastern edge of the uh, of the monument, uh, and that's going to be with the Drix uh, ASV, autonomous surface vessel, and we'll do a bunch of Drix mapping in, inside the monument. Is in some of the shallower areas. Um, and then there's supposed to be some scuba diving expeditions later this su after the summer into the fall. And that's also in the monument and being planned. Uh, I don't have a lot of details for that. And then I'm sure we'll be back with the ROVs. Um, most of the ROV work in the monument uh, has been in the expansion area of the monument and um, diving on seamounts like these. And um, last year we did the Chautauqua seamounts, which were south of here. And um, I can't remember the other ridge of seamounts to the east of where we are. I'd have to look that up. It was uh, another expedition that we did last year. Bridge, this is that. So I suspect we'll keep doing those just to complete the exploration. But um, maybe next year. In the year after, so we'll be in this area, general area, for a while. Are there still plans to go to Guam? As far as I know, uh, things are being discussed. Um, potentially another um, visit to American Samoa oh, yeah. and uh, Howland Baker great. Islands yeah. before we go to Guam. So, if I had to guess. That would be done first, like next season, and then Guam would be two seasons from now as we work our way to Northern Mariana, Mariana Silence. I'll have to pick up See Fiona. You guys there. Yeah, yeah, we'll have to yeah. go <laughs> visit. That'll be fun. What kind of work will we do in the Marianas, in the trench? Or Probably the back not. Uh, there, There is. Um, there is some uh, of, uh, volcanic uh, back arc spreading environment yeah. there. 
um, with some hydrothermal vents. Fantastic ones. Yeah. So I'm sure that would be a focus for sure. And probably some other, um, you know, deep coral seamount type exploration work like we're doing here. But that won't be next year. It'll be probably two years, two or three years from now, if I had to guess. Everything changes. <laughs> Okeanos Explorer is coming to the Pacific later this year. They're going to be working off the west coast of the U.S. and uh, up to Alaska. And uh, they also have plans to be heading in that direction to the western Pacific, southern, uh, central Pacific area in a couple of years' time. But I think the focus for next year will be Alaska, the Aleutians. Lim limited sort of time window to work up there, I think, in the middle of the summer, really. July, August is the best. After that, is the weather just too much? Usually. Oh, what is that? It's like a sun star? So you can go star on, sort of halfway there. engulfing yeah. a pair of bubblegum coral. Yeah, I think the weather window for work in Alaska is challenging yeah, yeah. wow it's wow like the it's same sun star from earlier but it's completely engulfed this, this. Yeah. yeah do i if yeah do i if the uh, okeanos explorer is going to the pacific um what is there going to be a ship that takes its place in the atlantic um, potentially. I Pushing know that there's some there. discussion of that. Um, that's probably quite a ways out, five that's years or Thanks. more. Um, but they actually, o Okeanos, they're going to the Mid-Atlantic Ridge this summer, so I'm looking Might forward to that. Stomach right there. So they're trying to bang out a lot of Atlantic work this year. They, and they've been there for like the last five years, so. The porch light pole. But there's always other projects that they fund on non NOAA ships or non you know no oh, other wow. ships besides oh. Nautilus and Okeanos. Look at that. Is, is that, that the is it coated? slime mucus? Yep. It's probably emitting enzymes to help digest <coughs> the coral. Oh and this is children how a sea star eats coral. This sea star reminds me of those reef eating coral reef reef eating sea stars the, the crown, crown of thorns, thorns. Yeah. yeah we have like an eradicating project for that those kinds of sea stars mm -hmm. and so if we see them out on the field we either like shoot them with vinegar or if we don't have that gun we kind of just like flip it on its back and bury it with sand oh interesting yeah. looks exactly like this are they uh, native or? No, or they're invasive. They're invasive. Yeah. Okay, so that's why you're trying to eradicate them, yeah? Mm hmm huh. I think in one area we had um, managed to shoot up maybe 35, but wow. there was like a whole bunch more. We just didn't have enough air. Yeah. Wow. You say you shoot them with vinegar? Yeah. So you we inject them, right? We inject them, sorry, to shoot them. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, wrong <laughs> choice of words. <laughs> yeah, shoot That's up a again. great image. I've never really yeah, seen that very before cool. with a uh, sea star that large, you know? Surprised that Carl holds them up. Makes me think of this. We gotta make a little film. Do you feel bad for the coral? No. No, I don't. Either. I don't either. It's a part of the life Survival. cycle. Yeah. <laughs> it's a, it's a circle of life. Right, Unless it's moving. invasive. True. Yep. <laughs> Good for a move. Bridge, True. This is Nev. Another four zero meters at two two five, please. That was really wild. It's like a bit of a wall on your right there, Paul. I'm gonna come up. Want 
turn into the hill a little bit. I'll come over that way. Um, this is for a geologist or a biologist or an ROV pilot. Do you prefer to explore seamounts or trenches or both? Both. How about you, Dwight? Yeah, t trenches are interesting because you get canyons that uh, go down the sides of the trenches, and um, they can be interesting at times. I've only explored one real trench in Puerto Rico trench um, that I remember. Um, the seamounts are a little more biologically div diverse, I'd say. Yeah, for sure. Or probably, yeah, a lot more <laughs> biologically <laughs> diverse. Trenches can be just completely filled with sediment very challenging, you know, especially live boating. Yeah, I can remember in Puerto Rico seeing these incredible, like, cliff walls of sediment just slumping down. It looks like, you know, it's one earthquake away from total collapse. Challenging to map, too. You gotta kind of map double coverage to get to that. The ROVs can't really, these ROVs can't quite go deep enough to truly study the trenches. They did work on the Cascadia margin quite a bit, and technically that, that's it's a subduction zone, but it doesn't have much of a trench. Um, but that's where they were looking at lots of methane we get a gas partial seeds. Zoom here? Yeah, sure, go ahead, Jeff. Are there ROVs that can go there? Maybe another It's pretty hour. deep, like 8,000 meters. Like the, uh, yeah, some can. Uh, I can't remember. Jason can go to 6,000, I think. Sebastian, the deep discoverer. Been in the Tonga Trench with Ropos. Oh, that's a wow. uh, truster. Ropos went that deep in Tonga? Uh, we were in the Tonga Trench, I forget. Was there snake stars on it? Quite, yeah. it was nuts. Super deep. Hercules could probably do it. Have we all worked on other expeditions together? I have not had the pleasure of working with. Dan, what's that thing in the background? Yeah, that's a good point. I don't